You with the MMA game, get them boys got game. You with the MMA game, get them boys got flame. Shout out to Cameron Roche and Kara say doing their own thing. Yeah, talking about the fight game. You with the MMA game, all the big names, breaking that game. Best in the game, never the same. You with the MMA game, get them boys got game. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the MMA game. My name is Cameron Roche. And my name is Ryan Karras. And today we are honored to have our fam representing Oxnard, California. Our boy, the undefeated war titan, Matt Terry. Let's go! Matt Terry, how you doing today? Our brother. Hey, I'm doing great, man. Uh, I appreciate you guys be, uh, having me here today. And uh, I'm excited, man. So let's let's talk about the fight game. Nice. Man, let's we get after We are so blessed, honored to have you on, dog. Oh, yeah. Our uh, first interview, we can't... Tell you how I happy know. we are to have you, bro. I know. Thank and you for being here, man. Man, just to give a little history, Matt and I, we we known each other for a while now. Mm-hmm. Uh, our, I guess, girlfriends at the time are really good friends. <laughs> and I, I could truly say, and I'm truly, uh, I'm, I'm so blessed to see, like, your path and, and how you've gone. Uh, this guy had built a full-on boxing gym. He did. In his garage. <laughs> but this is the first time I ever met him, bro. He had a full-on boxing gym in his garage. Nice. And it, it, it's just cool to see because, you know, he had a dream and, and mm-hmm. he's living it. Mm-hmm. He um, loves his craft, so he did what he needed yeah, to do man. in order to be able to, to do his So, craft. super blessed to have you here, yeah. bro. Like, I really mean that at the bottom of my heart. I love it. Nice. I love it. I love your journey. I love your journey, and I really want to talk about it. Yeah, man, no, I appreciate that. And uh, when we were watching the fights uh, prior last night... Uh, I did mention that. You remember, I was like, hey, man, you saw the beginning. Yeah, man. yeah. You saw me uh, turn thoughts into things, man. So, yeah, nice. man. So, nice. I definitely didn't forget that. Yeah. So I guess for me and, and you know, just for, for the audience is what really made you uh, get into, you know, boxing? What what made that drive? What what, what got you into boxing? Um, I'll fast track you because, you know, I can talk all day. But, yeah. Um, I, yeah th- <laughs> thanks for asking that question, though. Thanks for asking that question. Um you know, I was in the military, uh, 19 years old. Uh, I was a fight fan like a, a lot of other guys that are 19 year old running around, this and that. Um, I had a little more uh, money in my pocket. Um, I, I didn't want to drink beer every day after getting out of the Navy, so <laughs> okay. I joined a gym. Nice. One thing led to another, mm-hmm. and um, I started realizing, like, hey, man, I, I think I can be pretty good at this. You know, let, let's just see where, how far it goes. So milestones. Yeah. I want to be an amateur competitor, MMA, boxing. Um, I had some injuries um, because I'm on my little climb now. I won't really specifically disclose too much of my injuries. But <laughs> please don't. Please don't. <laughs> no, 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 don't but give you know, somebody an advantage. But you know what? What led me to boxing was um, I was I had um, some ligament repair surgery, and in the recovery time frame, I said, "Let me just master boxing at least, mm-hmm. get my hands going while I'm recovering." Um, this, that, and the third, and I just fell in love with it, man. So I'm still an nice. MMA practitioner, but mm-hmm. boxing is my first love. And, uh, you know, boot camp and boxing, I became a man. <laughs> <laughs> Did, uh, who was your favorite boxer growing up? Or yeah. when you started getting into boxing, who was the one that kind of made you realize like, oh, I'm going to follow this guy? Um, real briefly, as a kid, the one that stood out the most, which is very apparent to see at the time, was, of course, Mike Tyson. Of course. There you okay. go. You know, nice. okay. Good old Mike, man. <laughs> Good old Mike, right? Mike. I just knew that there was a lot of excitement behind that guy and the whole um, aura of him as a kid. Definitely, I soaked that up. Mm -hmm. But I never took it serious until, um, you know, about that time that I was taking boxing serious. I was just coming back from an injury. um, But I'm back in training, Mm -hmm. uh, full-fledged, ready to go. And, um, you know, man, I said this before. I don't want to, like, this guy thinking I'm, like, trying to use his name. But it's just attached to my story, which is what you asked. Yeah, absolutely. um, You know, again, you know... uh, Victor Ortiz was uh, just, uh, he was a prospect on the rise. Mm-hmm. He, had, he wasn't world champion yet. Oscar De La Hoya signed him. He walks by me, man, in a gym. Right? Yeah. yeah. And that whole thing, I'm like, I know who that guy is. Let me confirm. I ask him, you know, he's like, yeah, it, it's me. And I'm like, <laughs> oh. So, you fanboy for a split second? <laughs> well, most definitely. And if yeah. things are always good, I'm a fan first. Like, you guys right, are right. legit analysts and fans. You guys do your homework. And, oh, I appreciate that, brother. Yeah, and as a fighter, I appreciate it as well. You know, you guys have another niche of genuine care and insight to the game. So it's not just drinking and talking the talk. You guys really are into this stuff. Yeah. Right? So, yeah, no boxing early in the military. You know, I saw Victor. He's only a year older than me, and I wanted to be like him. 
Nice. So that's where that started, you know. There you nice, go. nice. And so you were pretty like heavily involved in his camp, I guess, earlier on, um, in you know your amateur career. I, I would, uh, I would be more of like his buddy outside, and okay. I would have my amateur camps, yeah, um, around his professional camps. Um, I won't take any credit for his preparations. I, I yeah. did spar with him briefly for about a month, a few amount of times. Uh, where he did take it easy on me, yeah. Um, and and I'm, I'm blessed and thankful that he did, because at the time we were really close, and um, now we're just, we, you know, we got different priorities, and we're not as right, close. Right, right. It's a whole other story, but, right? You know, but yeah, no, he, he uh, I learned a lot by just watching him and other guys, other, okay. a lot of other guys. Okay, know? okay. So that's good. That's good. And then, like, I guess for me, seeing your garage at that point, right? Do do you find yourself like looking back and saying, damn, like? That's where I started. Now, you know, my path has changed. I'm, I'm on this. I'm pretty much living my one of my dream. Like I'm, I'm chasing my dream. Right. When you saw that gym, yeah. Uh, a long short with that would be. Uh, I told myself, okay, now's the time to to get after it and, and just start training, training. So when the time comes, if I do turn pro, I'll be eligible and be ready to turn pro. Um, but the real deal urge behind it was I didn't have a gym. Just moved to San Diego, transferred from mm. the military, mm-hmm. did four years here locally in Oxnard where I became a fighter. But when I went to San Diego, I didn't have, you know, San Diego is really popular with MMA. Mm-hmm. Great mm-hmm. gyms yeah. out there. They yeah. have great boxing gyms too, but just yeah. not in comparison to Oxnard. It's mainly, mainly MMA yeah. down in San Diego versus right. boxing. Yes. Mm-hmm. Nice. And, and, and Oxnard is the heart of, uh, it, I, I, I'm sorry, Oxnard's a boxing capital. I'd like to say um, for sure, the, of the whole West Coast, mm-hmm. uh, they have great fighters up in the Bay Area, of nice. course. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, but anyways, back to Oxnard, yeah. um, the spirit uh, of fighting. You know, you got uh, Fernando, ferocious Fernando Vargas. You have Robert yeah. Garcia, yeah. who's a who's a very successful boxing trainer. Right. Yeah. You know, he would train Maidana for Mayweather, and he he would train Victor and all these other guys. But um, it wasn't until Fernando okay. uh, Vargas he made it really like Hollywood star power because. Mm-hmm. Although Robert Garcia was a first world champion, Fernando hit that star power level. Yeah, he yeah, yeah. Oscar De La Hoya. He was in uh, Alpha Dog with Justin Timberlake mm-hmm, in, in mm-hmm. movies. So mm-hmm. he was in uh, Moesha, that uh, uh, Brandy TV show. Yeah, series. yeah. That's a classic, <laughs> bro. That's, that's a classic. classic. You know what I mean? <laughs> he had that look in his eye, though. So back to Oxnard, when you're starting out as, a, as an amateur fighter and you're looking up to these guys... When you would see Fernando Vargas walk out versus uh, Ike Corte or any of these guys that he was fighting, right. he had that look in his eye of kind of like that chingon badass, like, okay. hey, I'm fucking down. I don't, I don't <laughs> care what happens. Right. So me trying to be tough, it was easy for me to uh, be pumped up with a guy like that that's a local hero. Mm-hmm. But with the, co- the, the cohesive bond of that was... He had a lot of daddy issues. Okay. Again, you know, I love my father. I was kind of weary with the first podcast speaking about my father just because I didn't want it to be misunderstood, my expressions about that. But um, yeah. right. I'm great with my father. Everyone has their own obstacles. Um, but I just, you know, I don't have issues with my dad, but I have daddy issues. Mm-hmm. Um, he tried his best. It's not his fault. Um, but, you know, uh, as a kid, man, you don't understand everything. So when I hear Fernando, sticking back to Fernando, he had daddy issues too. So okay. when I when I related to Fernando in that way, the and he's a local hero, you. bro, he was yeah, the guy. Bro. Right. Yeah. He's the guy. Bro. Nice. So I feel like if he's tough and he's sensitive with that stuff, yeah. so, so can I. Why can't I be? He has three sons that are all active pro fighters right now. Wow. Great kids, great attitude. You're yeah. Reason, right? And I, and I want to be just like that too with my three sons. Yeah. You know, so. So that's, that's kind of the whole spark of, like, I want to be a boxer nice. starting yeah. on Oxnard awesome. at 19. You know? <laughs> yeah, that's so, sick. That's so did sick. Did you play bro. any sports growing up? I did, man. What did you play? I, I, I was a triathlete. I played football, baseball, and soccer. What was your favorite out of those three? Man. <laughs> hey, 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 you, you know you, where I'm going with that. <laughs> you better say the right you one. You better <laughs> say the one that we want you to hear. Case by case, man. And, and, it and, was probably football, wasn't it? Well, well, I'll say this. Football was the, the – I only played football one year. Yeah. My senior in high school, we won a championship. Okay. We CIF were, or just uh, – Yeah, league? no, I, I'm ignorant. We were – they're a D2 school. Okay. 
Um, but they, they, we went down to D3 when we won that championship. Okay. But to, to give credit to that, though, yeah. all the D2 schools like us all went to D3 that one year. And okay. won. And my, my, <laughs> well, my theory is they were trying to be sneaky with like some type of confidence season. Like, hey, let's go down to D3. Let's implement all these new plays because we had a new coach. Okay. Right? They're like, let's go down to D3. We got yeah, a new yeah, coach. Yeah. Let's see if his playbook works, right? <laughs> well, it did. We were champions. But all the D2 schools were – We'd beat their ass in preseason. <laughs> and then, you know what I mean? And, but, and you should have won D2 pretty much. That's what I'm yeah. saying. Yeah. Well, all the D3 schools went up to D2, and D2 went down to D3. D2. We oh, lost. Yeah, okay, <laughs> so, okay. But other than that, like football, baseball, soccer, I'll admit up until football my last year, soccer was my f- – Funnest nice because okay. I love okay. the whole, there you go. I love the yeah. competitive alphaness in soccer when like I was a mid guard. Uh, I would I, I'd be really excited if they put me up forward because I wanted to be like the guy. You want to score? Yeah, yeah. I want to yeah. score, man. That's, that's <laughs> what we do. But, oh boy, I oh, wasn't boy. accurate. I wasn't accurate with yeah. shots. I wasn't we are accurate at pitching. <laughs> okay. Uh, so like in baseball, I wanted to be a pitcher. Right. But I wasn't accurate in soccer. I wanted to be a forward. I wasn't yeah, accurate. Score. Yeah. But I was like a tough. Middle guy, right? Okay. Yeah. So, okay. like in football, I was outside linebacker or strong safety. Wasn't the biggest, but I wasn't the most accurate or, sh- or fastest. But I was a good, like a strong guy in certain places. Nice. Yeah. So I think in <laughs> baseball as well, I was one of the uh, the the first five hitters, which is typically your your power guys in baseball. I don't yep. know about your analytics in baseball, but yep. usually your first five guys. Um, they, they, you know, you can get them. Your power hitters get the guys. No, no I'm sorry. The first three guys get on base. Mm-hmm. Fourth like, guy and fifth guy hit them in. Yeah, the power hitters get them in. Yep. So I was one of those guys. So I'm bringing where, where this is going to is fighting. So <laughs> all, all these sports, though, all these sports, yeah. kind of made me realize when I was fighting later on. Right. Like, hey, I needed to be a fighter because, yeah. like, I would hit a few home runs in baseball, but I wasn't the best uh, in soccer. Um, I was really aggressive, and I, like, back to that point, when I'd be running downfield, shoulder yeah. to shoulder a guy, you know how that is sometimes. You can, oh, yeah. Whoever drops levels first and digs in up, you can, like, lift a guy off the ground. And yeah. He's, like, sliding for, like, 20 yards. Yeah. I love doing that. That's yeah. great. I'm a small guy, and I can still do and it to guys. Oh, yeah. oh, you kidding me? Okay. Yeah. 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 So oh, yeah. But, you know, I, I was always an athletic guy, um, but it, I feel more natural now as a, as a fighter because yeah. that shit is real. There you go. Right? Yeah, See? man. That's, it stuck that's with him. He, he felt it and was just like, yeah, yeah, I like this. Yeah. <laughs> I love hitting guys well, in the like face. In football, when you get blasted, <laughs> even in soccer, when you get blasted in sports, you want to get them back on that whole nature of how you get them back. Oh, but bro. me, I took it personal every single time. Like when I get blindsided, even playing scout D or in a game, I just get blasted by like some uh, uh, tight end. Yeah. Uh, I, would, I would think it would be unfair kind of because I didn't see it coming, but it's like, bro, that's the that's game. That's part of the game. Yeah. 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 But I was like, bro, like in fighting, like, but no, you know, he's trying to hurt you. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So like, you have a chance. Trying to take like, your head off every time. It's you or him, bro. There's like yeah. a yeah. game, or this is part of it. No, this is the game. Uh, you know? So true, bro. Cam, Cam's my favorite so thing true. in soccer: scoring goals. Number one, that's the easiest way to get back to somebody, and then putting it through their legs, making them every single time. <laughs> that's yeah. always the best. To, like I think for me, oh. it's definitely scoring. Oh, it's for sure. Scoring, that's why I put like number one. Like I don't care down. what you say. I'm like, gonna put that ball in the net. I'm gonna smile at you as I walk by and be like, "I only need one." That's it. Uh, you know what? I, I was big on headers, so really? and 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 I was really like that was one of you my like, like things. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So like if I was able, especially over like taller guys, if I was able to like get up oh, and yeah. head over them, yeah, bro, I'd give them that like, the, the AI yeah. stank face. Like yeah, bro, like I got boosies. You better watch it. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's coming again too because I'm a scorer on the next header too. Because I missed that last one, but I'm scoring the next one. Yeah, fucking mm-hmm. love it and celebrating. Oh, I can't. <laughs> oh my god. Anyways, uh, back to fighting. Back yeah. to fighting. Um, so for me, uh, I guess looking at everything, right? What made you decide like this was the right time to go pro? Uh, FOMO, man. Just to say it real quick, yeah. I, you know, fear of missing out. Yeah. Um, it was already a two to three year delay. Um, Can I actually ask something? Inter- yeah, interrupt. No, when did you go pro? Amateur versus pro? Sorry, so, what, what was the yeah, year? Sorry, as part of this. Yeah, my, my first amateur fight was uh, right before I turned twenty three. Okay. And it was a Golden Gloves. Um, I was one and one in my first tournament. A lot of guys don't even go to the Golden Gloves. Do you get paid as an amateur too? Not at all. Okay. If you're in a, <laughs> so it, it, an so no, like fighter. no amateur fighter gets paid. Nah. Really? I mean, I mean, no, no, they can with like if prime or companies want to. Oh, okay. But I mean, typically the nature is you'd probably want a pro fighter because of his exposure and he's involved with actual real money around him. Right. Mm. Right. Amateurs uh, get televised if they're Olympians. 
Ah, and then okay. you'll have maybe okay. McDonald's there you or go. Wheaties, right? Okay. So, and they'll okay. get a sponsor by then. Which is what I'll clue you in on this, which is why Americans don't really win gold medals. This is the controversial talk of the talk. If you've noticed, our last gold medalist in boxing as a male was uh, Andre Ward. What? And that was 2004. That n- oh, wow. Jeez. Oh, 2004. And before him, it was Oscar De La Hoya. And that was early 90s, probably? Late 80s, maybe? <laughs> oh, wow. And, right? and the, short, the short answer of why, they screw Americans. Like you saw Floyd Mayweather got screwed. Uh, Roy Jones Jr. got screwed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just the other fighters in other countries have a lot of money on the plate for their amateurs because those are the ones that make money. They're the ones that are getting paid. Okay. And they don't have pro okay. fighting in like Ukraine, where Lomachenko's from. Mm-hmm. He's a double gold medals champion. Ukraine doesn't have pro fighting. Really? So he had to come here. He has to go somewhere else in order to be able to get that exposure and experience. He debuted like at 30. Oh, You know, I debuted at 33. I have my own late story. Mm -hmm. Never been knocked out, all this. But Lomachenko's been boxing since he's little, but because he comes from Ukraine. Right, right. He's been an amateur the whole time, and now he's Wow, so then it's probably the same thing happened to, uh, what's his name? And I love this guy, too. Triple G. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Triple G. Yeah. So what was the year that you turned pro? Uh, last year, man, uh, nice. 2022. Congratulations. So, thank you, bro. I appreciate yeah, that. Yeah, man. Congrats. And, but the, the ideal plan on the back of the head was if I had my first amateur fight, like right before I turned 23, mm-hmm. in my head, I'm like, you know what? I'm on a late game, but this is still doable. So amateur fight right before 23. Okay. So 10 years later, a decade later, at 33, yeah. I turned yeah, pro. pro. Mm-hmm. And I did, man. You know, and I did. <laughs> and I'm, I'm so you like, thought about it. Good. So that yeah. garage gym. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Definitely. I'm a human dude. Mm-hmm. So when I'm thinking of these things, of right, like right. gym, all this stuff, I definitely thought, you know, when I'm taking a shower or whatever, I'm like, is this all just a waste of time? You know? And, and um, you know, we can all relate to that in some form or, or, or manner of an invested thing we do. Okay. Right? Yeah. Is this a waste of time? So when the opportunity lined up um, to turn pro, which it was a definitely gift and, and, and a surprise, and we'll, we'll talk about that uh, um, but uh, I just had to do it when, when, when I was able to do it, and the time is now, man. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. So. Yeah, man. That's oh. sick. That's so sick. And so, like, how, I guess, now, like, you're, you're training, like, how, how often now? Every day. Every day. Okay. And um, everyone's different, but my thing is I'm not here to set PRs. I'm not here to max out. I totally believe in new school training, yeah. but adhesively connected still to the old school stuff that's smart and, st- and it for sure works. Right. But I don't like old school mentality. Real quick, I don't like the whole um, like we were talking about when you were doing some boxing training. Yeah. Your skills, they, they fed you to the <laughs> Got wolves. Got thrown to the right. wolves, bro. You don't want to be thrown to the wolves. Well, how bro, many times that's you not fucking, fun. My, my, my second times? week, bro, my second no. week, I'm, I'm sparring. Yeah. And, and I told him this story, like, second week, I'm, I, I'm just trying to just get my feet wet, yeah. like, and learn. Yeah. Like, that's my big thing. Like, I've, I've always been, like, I, if I'm going to do something, I want to learn it. I want to know the basics before I really go in. Because mm-hmm. once I dive in, I'm in. Mm-hmm. And they fucking made me spar against this guy that had all the all the all the gear you could imagine, and the only rule was if you have headgear on, you get hit in the head. If you if you don't, <laughs> you don't then any, it's, body, it's shots. body shots. So of course I'm fucking. I you have put no, headgear on. No, I put no fucking headgear on. But well, this remember guy, you said the guy was already this, gearing up. Yeah, this guy, this guy, he had all the gear on. So like I could hit him in the head, but. As we're, you know, he's sizing me up, I'm sizing him up, he's calling out his shots before hitting me. <laughs> so so he's, obviously he's boxing. He's looking at he's me, like, bro, and yeah. he's like, I, he must have known from, and he goes, liver shot, bop, liver shot, bop, hit me twice. And you I've dropped. never gotten hit like that. Yeah. So it fucking hurt. Yeah. My instant reaction, I'm, I, I get mad. Like, I get fucking mad because, one, he knew something I didn't fucking know. <laughs> And that's where to hit somebody yep. to make it fucking hurt. Mm-hmm. I just knew, Cameron, you just need a block and swing because that's all I was taught. Mm-hmm. So in the process of me getting fucking hit, I'm like, well, I, I go into survival mode. Yeah. Survival mode is, well, I need to just rush him. I have to, I have to just go at him. And in the process of me doing that. He steps aside. Fucking pivots. Yep. Shot, shot. Done. And, and that my body is fucking, like, I was like, yeah, bro, I'm done. Like, it, 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 there's no point. Like, I'm getting, out, I'm getting nothing out of this. Yes. Yeah. You're, so, yeah. You're, not, you're so, not learning anything. You're just getting Right. So, at that moment, out. it's the wrong gym for fucking me. Yep. I, I left after, after that. Right. I was fucking out. I, feel, I was out. I feel like you were going to say that. Sadly. That's yeah, the old fuck. school training, I need to man. find another gym. Yeah. yeah, you need to find another gym. And, and that's old school training, man, when they're like, hey, you know, it's, it's the doghouse, all that. Nah, man. If, if someone really cares about you, they will groom you. Yeah. Like I shared with Cameron last night, and I'm not with my original coach. He's still a great guy, this and that. But uh, one thing I am grateful that he did was he didn't allow me to spar for a year and a half. 
Oh, and wow. he wasn't planning, I don't think, on letting me spar for a couple of years. Really? Yeah. But I kept, like a little kid, like, coach, put me in, coach, put me in, coach. And he's like, mijo, no. <laughs> like, you're not ready. And right. Like, and I would get, like, I wouldn't tell him nothing. <laughs> but get, in like, my head, I'm like, what do you yeah. mean? I'm super ready. I've been <laughs> yeah. in the mirror at home. I'm like, I'm ready. <laughs> yeah. I got, I got all the gear. Yeah. You know? He's like, I can oh. play the part. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you're going to get chopped up. You're going you're gonna to die. I mean, like, how Cameron was his few times training, and they yeah. throw him in there, like, well, that, this that is the it. thing. You can ruin a career that way because bad habits will form and they're hard to break. Like, mm. if you're getting, like, like listen, like a dog that was abused. Right. If you're a nice person, you didn't do that. Nope. But you're just trying to show it love. It winces. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so yeah. Same when you thing put your hand fighting. out to it. Yeah. Yep. Same thing with, so, so that stuff. Nice. Right, so. Interesting. So training smart is key. So back yeah. to the thing is like I train every day nice okay. and easy. Yeah. And preferably, like I just started mixing it up with a few guys. Um, one of my, my well, my guy that I shout out to Manolo, uh, he was a competitive boxer as, as a youngin and a kid. Okay. He, he was doing amateur stuff and he was, he, he sparred a lot, you know, world champion pros. So he does mitts with me now and okay. he'll, he'll do playful sparring with me. We just played, we just sparred uh, nice and smart, nice yeah. and light uh, last Thursday. So we're talking a few, few days ago. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And um, I didn't have headgear on, so like, but I did tell him, like, hey, bro, I want to wear my headgear. And he, he does this all the time. Uh, just you got to be with a guy that knows how to work with you. Mm-hmm. Right. And then I can tell him, uh, like, hey, let's turn it up a little bit. Yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah, yeah. He already knows. He gets it. And he knows like, what yeah. gear to turn it up to. Yeah. Not, and he doesn't go too fast or right, too slow. Right, right. So then you, you, I mean, and you already have almost like your circle of people you would want to spar with because you know, they know the like the limitations that you would require. And then right. you could also set the tone with them as you guys get into, you know, your training routines yeah, and I stuff Yeah, I actually like that. only recommend to be very selective and strict with who you like, quote, like, quote, spar, spar with. with. Right. Because if you have like a, hey man, you want to do a couple rounds? Uh, yeah, you know, what's your name, bro? You know, like, <laughs> yeah. feel like so what's up? What are you right. looking for? What are you right. trying to work on today? Right. Because you can be skilled. Mm-hmm. Say you guys are like, like here, and this guy's like down here. Yeah. Like, humbly so, but he's just trying. He doesn't know how to kind of hold back. Right. You mm-hmm. know, right. there's all these little like, oh, fuck. Like, so like if he lands a hard shot, because it can happen. Yeah. You know, if you're way better, you get cracked with one. Right. He gets excited because he's like, oh, this is my moment. Right. You're like, Bro, like, yeah, you haven't even had like an amateur fight. Like, <laughs> it is for him. It but is because yeah. even yeah. though it's training, it's yeah, still, this is it's still it. a fight you're for Karis. him. Yeah, you're, you're Cam. Yeah, Cam. He's a killer. <laughs> I, I, I landed one on him. So you got to be careful. Like even John Jones, like, you know, shout out to John Jones. What we were just talking right. about, yep. 285. He said he was sparring with a guy that didn't necessarily crack him, but like he can tell he was you like him. stepping on the gas, bro. Right. And then John just stopped, and the guy like was like, "What?" And he put his hand on his shoulder, and he's like. Hey man, uh, thanks for the work today. Uh, we, we, we will yeah. never work again, like in my life. Like he said something like, "I'm never working." Yeah, you're wow. done. Ever again. You're done. And that was his. He blew it. John yeah. Jones yeah. is one yeah. of his training partners, right? Yeah, psych. So, so you know. So uh, I have heard uh, by listening to Bisbing and Anthony Smith mm-hmm. um, and a couple other fighters, obviously, but they say when they go to a specific gym, that they'll have some of the lower tier guys want to spar with them. And they don't want to spar with these guys because what that means for the lower tier guys is, oh, I have a chance yeah. to show my skills and to see how much I stack up against these UFC fighters, yeah. right? right? So the same thing potentially with you. You got one of the lower it's, it's, lower guys trying to step up and try to fight you and be like, okay, now where do I stack up against war type? Yeah. Like where, right. where's my skill level against this guy? Because then they try to hit you with something and all of a sudden you're like, okay, bro, I know what you're doing. Then you just go, yeah. bah, 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 and you hit him hard. And all of a sudden they're like, oh shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I did the wrong thing. I shouldn't have done that, Matt. My bad. <laughs> uh, he'll learn then, you know, and, and the thing that sucks is, uh, kind of like, cause I remember you did tell me you didn't clue it in here, but when, when he, they asked you to spar and you saw him put on headgear, yeah. a little voice in your head. It's like, well, don't be a bitch. Like, yeah, yeah of course. Much, we're yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, of course. That's, that's the man when, that when came out of it. Yeah. Sometimes it's like, well, don't like when I went to the gym, I'll just say this. I wasn't ready to spar that day. Let's just say I wasn't <laughs> in the best shape at that particular hour. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> hour? Like, a, like a late night bender. <laughs> I just think I'm doing a little sweat, do a little work on the bags, mm-hmm. but I got to ask to do a few rounds with another guy who's, he's, he's, he's good. But uh, look, I got, uh, I know, even though it didn't look too much to the other guy, yeah. I got hit with some shots that I definitely didn't like. Yeah. Um, I got hit to the body more. I had a poker face, of course. But when I went home, I was like, damn, yeah, like that bro. One, that one I got, got my me. ass whooped. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, know I did. But because I wasn't um, like uh, I wasn't training with, the, with the certain guys that I always trained with, 
Um, I was in a gym that does a lot of old school stuff. Uh, just go mm. hard or like go you said home. Earlier. Yeah. Right, you know, right. Like, mm-hmm. listen, man. What's what's the goal uh, to learn something or to like have these glory war fights that don't count? That don't mean anything. They don't yeah, even, they're not even counting as an amateur paid. fight. Yeah. Yeah. it's not even going into record yeah. at all. What is? What are we doing? Like, <laughs> you, well, shit, you fucking. Uh, I don't know who, who who's a <laughs> amateur record I was on when I got my ass beat that day in Sparta. He could have been a pro. Dude. Shit, yeah. he could have been he a pro. Been. Well, fuck, I'll, I'll take my stripe then. Just so, having fun, you know, running some numbers for at three so, with some dude, you know? Yeah. Uh, Max Holloway, Max Bless Holloway barely even spars anymore right. because he doesn't want to take headshots. He doesn't want to get hit in the head anymore. And he says he doesn't need to because what's the point of going into a war right. and fighting for somebody that it doesn't mean anything? When I'm taking all these punches, why don't I just take them in the cage right. when I actually right. get there? Right, I don't need to condition my chin. That's not a. That's well, not a thing. I like that you brought so. up Max Holloway because there. I remember him saying what you're mentioning mm-hmm. now, and uh, he also added, which I was like, "Fuck yeah." He did make it important. He goes, look, when you're starting out, you do need a little bit of that hard spot okay. right, in the beginning yeah. so you know like what time it is. Like, right. oh, this is what we're doing. This is the world <laughs> that they're in. Uh-huh. Yeah. Like it isn't all just like cool moves yeah. and like like you're going to feel what losing feels like. You literally feel it. Yeah. Not like I yeah. lost today, guys. No, you got your not ass like, kicked. You feel it. Like, oh, my God. Yeah. Like I've had my <laughs> jaw not broken, but like I couldn't even chew, man. Yeah. Like, seriously, I couldn't even chew. I had to have soup. Just it was one of those days, man. I got hit on the jaw, mouth open. When you, you know, this, this, you're throwing shots. Yeah. Like you get caught with your mouth open, um, you get your jaw broken. So, uh, you know, I've had, I cried in the gym in front of all the other pros. I was like, I was before my uh, first amp. I was 21, mm-hmm. and I was crying, got my ass beat. And I'm like, hey, what's up, man? What's wrong? Mm-hmm. What's wrong? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, yeah, I don't know if this is for me. I don't know. And it was like my first ass kick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It wasn't even like a street fight. Well, I was methodically, my ass was whooped methodically. Yeah. Right? Like it was a while. <laughs> yeah. I didn't just like, oh, I got hit hard. Fight's over. No, yeah. it was, no, it was, was multiple. He was picking me apart, right? <laughs> so then he's like, hey, coach, guess what Matt just said? I'm like, shh, like, don't fucking. Right, right, right. Hey. Blow me up yeah, that's coach. between us, bro. What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> this is like, behind what? the curtain stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Like, what are you doing, bro? Don't tell mom. Don't tell dad. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, what do you say? He's, I was like, he's like, he says he doesn't know if he wants to box anymore. Oh. And he, I was just like, dude, you Stop motherfucker. Yeah. Yeah. But then Coach just looks. I thought Coach was like, I can't believe what's wrong with you. No, Coach just goes, he's like doing something else. He just looks over. He goes, yeah, welcome to the club. Yeah. <laughs> and then the guy pats oh, me like, that's a good answer. you think we haven't been through yeah. what this is? Yes. Right. He's like, Matt, we've all cried. Yeah. We've all thrown up. Mm. Time and time again, right? Mm-hmm. But like, this is here. nothing new. <laughs> yeah, it's it's you know? funny. It's it's almost I've, I, I hate this saying, but I think I've lived by it now. It's 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 all part of the grind. It is. Yeah. It's all part of the grind, mm-hmm. and the grind is it's not going to be fun. There's times when it is going to be fun, but there's these moments that I think you have to go through in order to to sharp, sharpen your tools. It's part of that journey. Um, yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. It's not the Enjoy destination, it. right? I forget that. It, it's so nasty. That's why you got to train smart. Mm-hmm. You know? Right. Like, so, you, you know, if I'm saying I'm training every day yeah. and like, hey, when, how much do you train? That means uh, I would love to spar every day. If yeah. it's smart and, and playful, yeah. um, you're going to have car collisions where like if you and Karis are working and you guys do hit each other coming in, boom. And it was kind of like, oh, man. Thank God you guys already agreed to go about like 60, 70. <laughs> right, 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 right. Right. So then when you guys collide at your 60, 70, that 120 to 140% yeah. combined right. isn't fucking 200. Yeah. <laughs> isn't dropping somebody and laying somebody on this yeah. canvas right now. You can still get injured. Yeah. Now, don't get me wrong. A lot of guys, and this is my opinion, mm-hmm. that are quick to be like pussy or you're scared or you, you got you to gotta do the r- real thing. So when it counts to do the, I'm like, bro. I'm sorry, but like I feel like a lot of guys that say that are limited with their intellect and their mm-hmm. fight IQ. Mm-hmm. Um, they're tough, man. Uh, just like that guy in my pro debut. He was a tough son of a gun. And you know what? Luckily, he was a little more tired than me because I was tired. But <laughs> the thing is, man. Uh, Push through. Th- well, that intellect's going to gonna win that fight uh, when the guy's just dogging it out. Right? When you're... Mm-hmm. Uh, when you're aiming to fire instead of right. swinging and hoping, mm-hmm. you know, that's, that's where you want to be, mm-hmm. man. So, yeah. You know? Yeah. And so, like... Your, I guess you know your diet. Does that change? You know, between fight camps, does that you know, how 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 do you go about? I guess adjusting to to your diet. 
There's there's like three phases. Okay. So like once the fight's over, right? Like say I have a fight, yay, I can speak for thus far, right? My four fights have been victorious, thank God. But after like any of these fights I've had, mm -hmm. there's three phases. The first phase is of course like Patty Pimblet style. Four by four. Yep. Yeah. Just eat, of fries. Eating the good stuff. <laughs> the <laughs> good stuff. Everything. The stuff you can't have during camps. Dude, the stuff the tacos, that I'm eating on a regular. Yeah. <laughs> Give me all of it. Um, so yeah, but here's the thing. The concern uh, within that first phase is not going over my cap. So if I say, you know, it's another story, but I've gotten as big to like 230-something pounds oh, wow. before, bro. Oh, Jeez. wow. I was practicing in like bodybuilding before. Yeah. Um, before I had the opportunity to go pro. And obviously, it never happened. Thank God it didn't. But uh, I was willing to get as big as I could. So mm -hmm. I can get that big, 230, 240. Wow. Uh, like eating happily and like still training hard. But no, uh, so... I'm boxing now. I'm a fighter. Can't be that. I'm, I'm not hanging in there with Tyson Fury and, and uh, you know, say, all these big guys. Yes, yeah, right? no the big boys. Yeah, 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 big Klitschko boys. guys. No, but um. So no. Back to the point, man. Um. The three phases. The first phase, I go all out. As long as I don't go over 200 pounds. Um. 30 pounds to lose within three months ain't nothing. Right. Um. So then the second phase, I'm still eating what I want. Just not as much as I want. So <laughs> I, um, I intermittent fast for sure two months before the fight. Okay. Um, but then, so w what that does, it, it pulls me down into like the high 180s or, or low 190s, intermittent okay. fasting. And now, now, mind you, I'm still eating like a, like, like a quarter pounder. Or, but look, I'm running. I right. never stop training hard. Uh, even after the fight is end as ended, I'm yeah. eating that first phase of go all out. Still, yeah. I'm still, I'm not sparring, but I'm still doing bag work, strength okay. training. I'm probably not running yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm for sure doing strength training and bag work and, and keeping that rhythm going. You never okay. want to lose that rhythm. Okay. 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 Second phase, uh, quantity, intermittent fasting keeps me cinches me closer to like fighting weight, so I can cut weight. Then like the last two to four weeks, for sure, man. Um, intermittent fasting. Uh, the food is is moderate, like it, it, it's not super healthy. If I'm eating once okay. a day, yeah, which yeah. is a big meal, mm -hmm. uh, but um, if it, if it's not uh, bad food, I can eat twice. Okay, so okay. my window is 4 p.m. Uh, and I like, I, I just, once 4 PM hits every day, then I eat like a big meal. Yeah. Um, and I'll just share with you, but like, uh, no, I don't recommend going to Wendy's, okay? <laughs> but <laughs> Wendy's does have a baked potato. Yeah. Now, there's a lot of potassium and good stuff to hydrate your, your, uh, uh, your muscles and all just, okay. I'm not a nutritionist, but it's really good to eat potatoes, right. <laughs> especially if you're losing a lot of water weight as an athlete and mm -hmm. fighting you do. Mm -hmm. So I get a potato there on the way to the gym. I'll go to Wendy's and I just get a bottle of water, yeah. like a steamed potato, right? And then I'll go to like L and L barbecue or like pickup sticks, yeah. and I get like steamed rice and grilled chicken only. Okay. And so I'll okay. have. Like, it sounds like a lot of carbs, but again, I'm only eating once. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. In this day, so I'm getting uh, my fiber and my my carbs from like, and it's a white potato. It's not a sweet potato. Okay. <laughs> but again. It works out because my macros and micros aren't over because I'm eating once a day. Mm. Okay. Right. So I'm getting rice and potatoes and grilled chicken. And then I'll go train hard, man. I'll go train. Um, mind you, when I was fasting all day, yeah. the first thing, I'll run two to three miles oh. uh, before. Shit. So imagine how, like, if, you're, if you haven't eaten that, yeah. like, yeah, bro. Yeah. Yeah. We your know. abs, <laughs> yeah. they feel good, but your, your cravings don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, really yeah. feel that. Yeah. Okay? So those oh, potatoes no. and rice are it's nothing. So then, like, now we're, you know, it's not on box rec yet. Shout out. But uh, I should be fighting the 25th of March. Hey. Uh, weeks, you know. March 25th. Yeah, hey, hey. Do, you know, do a big shout out for that. Hey. <laughs> Say the date. Beer. The next one. Okay. So when can we see you in action again? Yes. Yeah. You know, if you can make it out to pop us in beer out in Rosarito. Okay. Tur Right, uh, tacos Ooh. and tequila, right? <laughs> Guys, uh, they, hey, and oh, Senor Frogs gets popping. Uh, it pays off. Oh, boy. I'm going to keep that in mind. Boy, I, I can't say it's it too much because to uh, if the wife finds out, then she won't let me go to your next fight. <laughs> so uh, when I go to your next fight, We're definitely going up Cameron's beers. is hey, touching man. down mm -hmm. at Senor Frogs. Mm -hmm. Whoever oh. wants to drive down and support. Yeah, uh, man. I got free tickets for everybody. Awesome. Uh, my promoter, he's he's got like 25. He's got... It's in the thousands. The amount he's promoting this event. Um, here, a little promo pitch for that. Uh, March 25th, okay. TMC Promotions is doing its first uh, own venue card, just TMC Promotions. Oh, My nice. guy would co-promote with other guys that have been doing it every week. Uh, you know, I won't dive into that, but like if you're a promoter and you're trying to do your own show, yeah. it's probably smart to co-promote first. Okay. Right? So you only spend half the investments, and then you only spend um, – 
uh, half the stress filling that cart. Now he's been doing that for a few times, so he's comfortable doing his first yeah. show. So this is this is big time. This is huge, then. This well, is for, huge. For my, um, I don't even want to use the word small man, but like, <laughs> uh, you know, because of course in here I am big time. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But like, I, and and look. I'm cocky confident. I'm not cocky douchebag. Um, <laughs> I like to think I'm a good guy, man. Like I said, so back to this point, um, uh, I'm happy because I get the luxury with my promoter to um, guarantee him I can deliver whatever I'm capable of doing as long as he makes things comfortable for me. Right. What comfortable for me means is um, if I'm not getting a high profile fight, right, where I'm yeah. lucky to get that, right? Yeah. I'm, right. I'm 4 0, I'm, I'm a prospect. Right. Um, I don't have an entitled, spoiled attitude. Like, I'm not saying I deserve all this stuff. No, I got to earn it, right? Yeah. So I'm not, that's why I'm not eager to be. We'll talk about it later, like this call out stuff. Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. But, <laughs> but, but, but I'll explain the base of my mindset. Yeah. Right now, um, I just need to keep doing what I'm doing with getting my name out there. Uh, looking for love because I love who loves me. That's my little cliche. I only love who loves me. <laughs> March 25th, TMC Promotions. Um, so a lot of big time guys will laugh at me, but I don't care because small time guys aren't getting what I'm getting. So here, I'll just say it. Yeah. Um, I'm going from four rounds to six rounds. Right? Okay. You want to work Stepping from up. There four, you go. six, yeah. eight, there we ten. Go. Mm -hmm. um, to be a main event, uh, typically it's an eight or a ten round fight. Right. Uh, but big venue things on TV, uh, ten rounds for a main event. Championship fights, 12, 12. rounds. Yeah. I want to end this year um, with eight round fights. Okay. Um, so so my, my, my rookie year, uh, last March to this March, March now. Yeah, I will have five fights, um, but within a year, within a twelve month span, my first year I want to have five fights, but my last fight of that year will be six rounds. So come next March, I want to be doing ten round fights, man. Yeah, I'm in the middle That's of my good. prime That's right good. now. There you go. Um, but um, here we'll keep talking. Let me cap this off. Sorry, March 25th, TMC Promotions. Uh, it's actually it's not Papa and Beer. Sorry, it's at a bigger venue where Chavez would fight. Oh, um, he's making it a big deal because uh, it's all indoors, it has stadium seating. Good. Okay, and Good. Um, I'm outdoors. totally <laughs> starstruck with the aura of like Chavez fought here. Yeah, you know, dude, right? like, and that's huge. That's that's mm -hmm. huge mm -hmm. in itself, bro. I, I, like I said, when I go weigh in and do medicals. And I got to get my vitals and my blood pressure and all that. And yeah. they like just test us, make sure we're good to fight. Um, I want to see like pictures like, oh yeah, Chavez was here. Sitting right you here. Know? Right, right. <laughs> um, shout out to this. Uh, that's, when, I, when I say small time guys don't get, um, look, I'm not getting high pay. I'm getting paid, but not in currency. <laughs> Yet, okay. <laughs> call me. Call me. I'll, I'll look, again. I'm marketable. I'll deliver. Give me a shot, world. But with this TMC, they're they're, they're going to have a promotional title on the line for the main event for me. Okay. Uh, not for me. Awesome. For for me to fight for. Right? Yeah. So this other fucker that I'm fighting, he could he could grab this. Promo it's a promotional title, kind of like how UFC. Right. You know, I mean, we're not the UFC, right? But like. The UFC, they don't, um, they're their own organization. Mm -hmm. they're, they promote their own fights. Mm -hmm. TMC has their own stuff. So they're going to have their own TMC uh, titles for different weight classes. Okay. And under their venue of entertainment, which is humble and local to wherever they're having their fights, yeah. um, if people, real fight fans, want to see entertainment at this venue, they will have guys that represent each weight class. Hopefully, ideally, God willing, I can for sure represent my own promotions yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. when he throws these venues. You know, right. So um, I, I really want to gain that because it's not a world title, of course, but right. you'll see uh, decorated resumes that, yes, make you applicable to hopefully bigger yeah. opportunities. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, but man, I mean, at, at the end of the day, like you're doing something that a lot of people aspire to do. And regardless of what it is for, I think that's a huge step. I mean, I'd love to say that about myself, but I, I can't. At the end of the day, I can't. You're doing it, and fuck, you have all our support. You do. We support you. Right. And, and you know what? Can't I'll tell you this. You fight. We know you'll get the job done. <laughs> mm -hmm. So motherfucker across the way, you better watch out. <laughs> and hopefully I bring that belt back on a follow-up yeah. episode. Oh, you man. Know, tell me about it. Go. That would be sweet. Well, here's the thing. is like In my position, you would want, right? Like, And, and obviously, you guys are legit. You're doing all the right aspirations and, and, and goal-seeking moves to keep growing. Right, mm -hmm. that's mm -hmm. why I'm super excited to be on your guys' podcast. Thank oh, you again. Thanks, but brother. like, let's say like uh, they say, "Hey, saw Harris, saw Cam. I love your podcast. You know, we we need a a guy to be an analyst mm -hmm. on Fox Sports, <laughs> right. whatever no. it is. No, no, that's true. You know, that's and, true. And, and they heard your voice like, and they liked it. And now it's like, yeah. don't delete true. this. Yeah. Right. 
Now you this keeps growing because now you're the Fox Sports guy, right? Or right. The, the ESPN. Now you're talking with uh, what's his name, Stephen A. Yeah. Right? <laughs> you're arguing with Stephen A. Uh, right. And yep. you know I love me some you Stephen A. Stephen Smith. A. I love yes. me some Stephen A. Smith. Mm-hmm. That's all you need is you need to. In my experience, bro, I'm not a high successor, but I know you need to be able to be the part, look the part, and make your investors. Uh, believe you are yes the, the yeah. believable part right. Right. so if you have it like you know ring magazine you yeah heard, you, you heard, heard of ring magazine mm-hmm. ruffled red white and blue bell yeah yeah, 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 yeah. the rock the rocky bell so that's a that's a <laughs> the rocky bell yes so that's a reputable uh like magazine bell right, right. it's yeah. not like the wbc ibf no. but it is considered because they give it to high legit fighters yeah mm-hmm. but the point is that gives a sense of worth in co- correlation with all the other things that are worthy. Yeah. So if I'm saying I'm fighting for a promotional title, I mean, there can be a Tecate belt in alcohol company. <laughs> yeah. that's, what that lets you know, though, is there, so if, if, if Roger or Karras wearing like a Tecate title, that lets other uh, promoters, other managers, other guys that you would want mm-hmm. to see you, mm-hmm. that lets them know if they want to. They go, you know what? This guy is staying busy, um, obtaining... Uh, titles to a degree mm-hmm. that mm-hmm. recognize him, right. and he's looks the part. He's playing the part, and uh, you know he looks uh, good while he's doing it. Let's, yeah, let's see if he get this title. <laughs> right. You know he looks good with that title. Let's get him. Let's get him this. Let's time, let's know? put him here and challenge him in this yeah. aspect against this fighter. It's mm-hmm. a good idea. So I love know, that. I go. love I love that. You had to hear that side of it. Now, uh, you had no, you had a question, Karis? I, I no? had one, but if you if you want to go, you're no, good. you go, you, you right. go. Um, I want to go back to uh, what is your strength in boxing and what as- aspect of your game are you trying to improve? Um, you, better, you, better not, uh, <laughs> you better not divulge too much. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, one of my other qu- what, uh, I, had to, I had to eliminate one of my other questions was, have you ever had a major injury in your life? And you just said that you don't want to talk about those, so you don't tell anybody. <laughs> so I'm like, well, eliminate that one because I had a major injury, so I felt like I'd ask, but go ahead. Um. <laughs> Yeah. So, which one for the injuries? Or no, the, not the injuries. The, what is your boxing? what's your strength in boxing? What's what's your best aspect? And then what um, what aspect of your game you're trying to improve on? Well, for sure, my strongest thing would be my mind, man. Hey, um, I remember Mike Tyson said on the set of The Ultimate Fighter when George Saint Pierre, shout out George Saint Pierre, GSP. GSP, GSP, baby, one of the goats. Come one on, of man. the goats. Mm-hmm. But GSP brought him in, and I thought that was interesting, right? Because like I said, Mike Tyson was a boxing idol growing up. GSP was my first goat, like I like MMA even, type style. Yeah, his yeah. password. This used to be my password. It's not no more. <laughs> but for like everything, it was GSP for life. Really? Right? He's changed it, by the way, guys. He's changed it. So yeah. don't even try. Yeah. Don't, don't even, even try it. So so. Back to Mike Tyson, he said something to the, the fight team, to Pierre's fight team. He said, listen, um, the strongest weapon a man can have is his own mind, his mind. Mm. right? So that hit levels with me, too. That's deep. Mm-hmm. So diving forward through that, when I'm, when I'm boxing, the back door um, reach around for me is the power. I, I, look, I, I'm, I'm totally humble, but I, I, know, I know I'm fucking strong, man. Mm-hmm. And I know, yeah. I know I can crack. Mm-hmm. And here's the thing. Um, it ain't shit. Unless you know how to apply it. How that. to use it. Yeah. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. Technique and everything. But what was a trip was coming into the game as a beginner, you want to learn all the stuff, right? So I kind of buried the power, right? Mm-hmm. Coaches will tell you, hey, you're strong. We know this. Work on what you need to do. And right. Do it. right. So after a while, I was overly hauled with trying to know all the IQ. Where I was like, Matt, this is when I started getting good. I was like, <laughs> dude, uh, you're fucking strong, man. Yeah. So like, why don't you just focus on using some of these basics? Not all the other fancy shit, mm-hmm. and just set up some of that set up that power. power. Yeah, bro. <laughs> then, so then I was like, yeah. Oh, good. So just start setting up that right hand, mm-hmm. uh, or or whatever power shot I want to do. Set it up. Yeah. So the mind and the power seem to be my two obsessive things I love, and yeah, you okay. see a lot of that with Canelo. Okay? Really? Mm-hmm. When, he, when he's when he's displaying mm-hmm. all that Canelo great stuff, mm-hmm. yeah. he's always uh, making shit look easy, but it takes too easy invested intelligence. And training and training and training right. to make it look easy. Right. Then mm-hmm. the power is the whipped cream, right? That's mm. just like, oh my God. <laughs> but what, I want, what I'm constantly working on, to my defense, right? I'm not going to say what I need to get better on. Right? Yeah. But what I want to get better on right. would be um, more volume. Now, I don't, I don't necessarily need it as far as right now with what's been working for me. I'm very content with, mm-hmm. with not losing what I know and, and I'll keep that between me, right? Mm-hmm. But, uh, uh, well, specifically. But like... Uh, 
it, it can only help you adding more. So I know um, when I when I practice like volume, for example, um, I'm kind of more for my height, uh, five nine, five ten. Uh, for my height, I'm kind of a wide guy for my height. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay, I'm an average size guy, but I'm just saying for my size, I'm, I'm kind of a wider size guy. Mm-hmm. So it doesn't really play in favor to do a lot of volume punching. This is my opinion. Mm-hmm. When you see guys like Pacquiao, these smaller guys are a little more compact. Jab, jab, jab. Yeah. They're like, bah, 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 bah. Yep. no, they're throwing like six to eight punch combinations. <laughs> yeah. Full speed, right? right? Those little guys, it's like maybe like maybe smaller guy like Messi. Okay. Right when he's got mm-hmm. those handles. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Right? And then, but you got like Ronaldo, who's taller. He can like explode on a sprint. Yeah, right? yeah, right? yeah. Right. He'll give you some flair. Yeah. And if you fell for it, he's gone. Yep. Right. Yep. So yep. Yep. that's kind of how I am with with the, these knockouts so far. Um, where if I got gotcha you, and then I hit you, the, well, these guys you're going gone, down. Right? Yeah, you're right. down. So, right. so I do have other areas that I know how to work with. But I want to just get even more better, right? So yeah. I know when you do high volume, it expends a lot of oxygen, and you got to be in great shape. Um, uh, I know you can easily mix up high volume and sporadic punching with anxiety, so I try to st- stray away from that. Okay. But a good example of high volume striking would be at a pace, not your hardest, mm. see if he can deal with that. Mm. Because you're on autopilot, and you already told yourself, hey, my, my striking is going to be at a jog status. <laughs> So, we're not sprinting here. Yeah, we're, we're not three quarters. Well, that we're jogging. It's the anxiety. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, yeah. so if like he catches you with a shot, and you've already established like range of where you can stay busy, giving him all this this volume, mm-hmm. whether they hit him or they don't, you just stay at it. If he can't deal with that pressure, yeah. you're gonna naturally see openings where like, okay, you'll just snipe him, boom, boom. with that one. Yeah, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so. I would recommend if you don't know how to deal with that high volume, definitely stay moving with your footwork. Have your have your de- uh, defensive preference up. Yeah. But I mean, it only help, man, if you have savvy volume too, mm-hmm. to where save that defense and footwork if you really got to survive. But like you might second guess your opponent if yeah. you're well versed too. So I, I just I have I have good volume. I want to up it even more, man. There because because my like I said, what I know about myself, my physique isn't naturally. Like with Canelo, he can have high volume combos like with Josecito Lopez and knock a guy out. But I feel like that's once he's already figured him out. If you notice with Canelo, he's very smooth and kind of like Floyd, very selective. Yeah. And um, that works, man. If you're not getting a lot of punishment, mm-hmm. and, you right? Know, so, so yeah. I just feel so many people are scared to fight Canelo. He's <laughs> so fucking good. It, well, what's really scary is that intelligence, man. Kind of like when you were you were sharing with me, oh, this guy. He has like some tricks that he already knows he wants to try with me. Right. I'm in here trying to figure it out. So in those split seconds of trying to figure it out, he's already got something figured out. It's yeah. scary, man. Yeah. Yeah, it's a hundred percent. It's yeah. not even like he has a scary goatee or his haircut. No. It's like no, he has some knowledge. That yeah. I don't. It's like fucking scary. And man. I have none. Yes. I have no he knowledge. He has knowledge to put you in a bad position yeah. and hurt you. Yeah. <laughs> and you're like, like, wait, I'm a little scared because that's why I'm staying away. I, I don't know how to get away from it. Staying away <laughs> from them jujitsu motherfuckers. Yeah. <laughs> I ain't going next to those. Absolutely not. <laughs> Fuck me up. Hell to the knob. They'll either break something or put you in a little nap. Too. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm good. I, well, I, if I had to pick one, I'd rather go for a nap. Uh, right, right. Put me to I, sleep. I, I, right, right. Yeah, fuck that. Well, that's what Khabib said about uh, Justin Gagey. He's like, ah, instead of uh, beating him up in front of all his people, I'm just going to make him go to sleep real quick. Right. So he put him to sleep. I'm not going to talk about fucking Khabib. Anyways, <laughs> moving on. Uh, so I kind of want to go back to your, your pro debut, man. And, and one thing that really intrigues me about, you know, the fight game and, and just is that walkout. Uh, what, yes. you know, your first professional great, great walkout, like how... How does that feel? What's going through your mind? Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, are you, are you nervous as hell? <laughs> are you Absolutely. excited? Like, yeah, they can tell you all they want. Uh, f- well, if specifically the first one, I was definitely nervous. But uh, like we said on the other episode with John's, there's these superstitious routine like techniques that you should do mentally to get right. you ready. To get yourself you, prepped. Get yourself ready, man. That first pro debut, uh, like I mentioned on another time, this was a last minute fill in my opponent. We had guy, we had a guy lined up for two months, super excited, super prepared. Would have been nervous anyway. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Definitely was nervous with this last with minute fill in. Right? Mm-hmm. He looked ready, um, right? Legit pit bull. This guy definitely won the first. I knocked him out in the second. Nice. He was winning the fight, <laughs> but he was winning the fight. I'm just gonna be honest. He yeah. was winning yeah. the fight. He was touching me more. I hit him with a couple shots, but like he was, he was uh, that first round. He, 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 I got a little shiner, a little black eye. Mm-hmm. And he cut me um, this eye a little bit. Mm-hmm. So um, 
Well, back to it. Uh, coming out before that fight, I knew I had my hands full. Um, so I even have some like pictures. I, I was like meditating. I never meditate, bro. As you're going out, you're meditating. <laughs> so, I get, apparently, I'm a meditator. When I, was, when I was doing it, I was talking to myself in like the temple of just me. I was like, mm-hmm. Yeah. Okay, you're here. Well, you're in it. Yeah, What's you're that? in the moment. Yeah, you're, you're, in, the <laughs> you're moment. in the moment. Yeah. So well, dude, thinking. it was such a two, three year delay of turning pro. The pandemic hit. It was hard mm. for everybody to make adjustments. Right. Right. <laughs> turning pro and boxing was even hard for the big time networks to even write. Like they yeah. had yeah. fake crowds, yeah. like all that yeah. stuff. Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm, that's how the apex came to be what it, it is empty. now. Yeah. Well, dude, I, I had a breakdown. I called my mommy. I called my mother. She's like, what's wrong, honey? I had a fallout with my former team, uh, and I was just crying. I thought it was never going to happen. Pandemic hit. I'm like, it's definitely a sign. Uh, I'm not going to turn pro, man. Mm. But then, uh, thanks. shout out TMC Promotions. Without them, this none of this would be possible. I wouldn't thanks be sitting here talking to you. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Shout out, Peter. Love shout you. out. And... Um, that's a whole other topic. I can explain that later. But because of them, I'm here, even through the pandemic. It got me ready. And um, walking out, I just told myself, I didn't go through all that crap uh, to not to, to, to just walk away. Right. Right. And mm-hmm. before you're walking out, and I'm telling you, man, in, in, in Rosarito, in, in Mexico, bro, we, I'm at the bottom of the bottom. <laughs> the guy I'm fighting is literally like five, ten feet away from me, warming up. Yeah. You both are cracking pads. You're like, it, it, you know, it's it's very true, exactly, because yeah. uh, I had the opportunity to go down to Mexico and watch a fight, like maybe a couple years ago before COVID and all that. Yeah. And uh, I remember it's one of my uh, a family friend. They they know a promoter down there, so they he was like, hey, you want to go? It's twenty bucks, like right. ringside. And I was like, yeah, fuck like, yeah, sure, fuck twenty go. bucks, yeah. So we're sitting there, and you know they're bringing the beers, and I'm look behind us, and it's all the fighters like warming up. And I was like, oh, shit. Like, I'm seeing you before you even. (laughs) Okay, cool. Like, yeah, it's cool with me. Mm -hmm. And then I'll never forget this, though. One guy, this guy was probably pushing like 40. Shouldn't have been fighting. Shouldn't have been fighting. No. And he goes in against this young guy. And I was like, oh, this is going to be bad. This is going to be. I I could see it. Right, right. Fuck. (laughs) The first exchange, the dude gets cracked. (laughs) And he gets knocked out. But he gets knocked out looking at me. And I was like, oh, oh, oh my God, this is for real. Oh, shit. I didn't expect to see that. Yeah, I just turned around and said, okay, who's the next fighter? Let me see. Oh, you didn't fight next? Okay. okay. That, uh, was, that was Big Punch, right? Yeah, yeah. Good night in TJ. Bro. Yeah, bro. <laughs> yeah, that TJ. shit was crazy. But, I mean, good. They had some really good, like, the last fight was pretty good. Mm-hmm. Like, two uh, young up-and-coming guys. One guy, I remember this, he had over, like, 200 amateur fights and fighting against another guy who didn't have as many right. but you could see the like the like the levels like right. there's different mm-hmm. levels you could see who they were trying to push and that guy ended up winning yeah yeah. <laughs> was, right? yeah but yeah it, 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 it's true man but i think like for me like thinking about like the mindset like i'm big on the mindset i'm huge like that mentality because you have to go in like this the other guy, he's trying to do the same thing well, that I'm bro, trying to do. Let me mention this. I don't want to leave yeah, this out. I'm, this is a good uh, topic because there's more than one fight going on, man. I'm telling you right now, we paid mm. like a hundred bucks USD, right? Not hundred yeah. pesos, hundred bucks for a guy to wrap my hands, my pro debut. Really? He does a shitty job. Okay, <laughs> oh, I go, I, I'm not even gonna say, oh, I feel bad. He's a hard worker. No, because I think he fucking stole one of my Filipino uh, kokoi necklaces, the, the one of the seeds. Mm. Of oh necklace. shit! Mm. Yeah, you, know, you see a lot of Polynesian and, and yeah, 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 yeah. As they walk out, yeah. So that's like my super tradition. Good luck. Well, it, well, to talk on that. According to the the, the tale about it, it's an indigenous uh, seed from an indigenous tree that's from Hawaii and it's in Philippines and mm. in, in spiritually and, and culturally it's like a it's like a sign of like it brings good luck and, and uh, good energy mm-hmm. okay mm-hmm. Good. So, somebody stole it from you or he yeah. did yeah. well one of them was missing I had to get more of course but yeah. this this guy wrapped my hands and uh, it was shitty I go to my promoter my manager I'm like bro what is this you yeah. paid this guy he's like Champ, take that shit off. What the fuck is this? I'm like, where's your money? He's like, it's fucking gone, dude. He's like, here. And he oh, had another shit. guy tape my yeah. hands. Meanwhile, that guy I'm fighting is all like. He's looking. Yeah, he's like, yeah. probably laughing. Like, this guy doesn't look ready. You mm-hmm. know? And I'm all like, mm-hmm. fuck, man. And um, and then the promoters. Listen, TJ had a bad rap the last 20 years. Like, oh, just go fight cab drivers and TJ. It's easy. <laughs> nah, man. Like, <laughs> no, it can't be. Dude, it's not. <laughs> I mean, I get what they're saying. That that stuff exists anywhere. Not right. just TJ. Right. But like politically they're trying to stray away from that whole idea of like oh it's easy in tj yeah no, so i this is my theory bro my guy that i was supposed to fight uh they said like i told you last night they said oh he, he's not fighting you. 
We're like, why? But he didn't pass medical. We're like, what was the reason? They're like, trying to eat some hippie shit now. You know, like, fucking TJ, bro. <laughs> you can't tell We're in TJ. Specific <laughs> medical stuff. This is like, TJ. Get out of here, bro. I'm going to tell you why this bullshit. Because yeah. I, didn't pass my, I didn't pass my blood pressure check because I was take, drinking like monsters or whatever to just kind of stay with it, cutting weight. Yeah. Bro, so they had to take my blood pressure the next day on fight day. Yeah. <laughs> my promoter, my manager is like, hey, we're here for medicals. You, showed, you told us to show up early. They're like, 80 bucks. What? We're like, what? Oh, what? They're like, he's like, 80 bucks. He's like, for what? Or he'll, well, for my medical fees. Yeah, right? for the medical, to, bro. Well, you That's medical crazy. Fees, right? You got to pay medical fees, which it was only like uh, 40 or 50 bucks. You get 80. COVID tested too for like 60 bucks. But um, at first, we're like, what do you mean? We already paid yesterday. He's like, 80 bucks. And it's a little more now, right? Yeah. So then when he handed her the money, my guy's thinking, all right, Matt, come on, we'll get checked out again. He's all like, all right, he passed. Oh, okay. like, oh, shit. I'm like, oh, yeah. oh yeah. my. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, hey, warm up. Your blood pressure is good. He's like, what do you mean? I mean, I feel good, but what do you mean? He's like, you're, you're good. good. You're good. Yeah. <laughs> the doctor said you're good. I'm like, yeah. yes, you are. Whatever. You there passed you the test. You're in TJ. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that's what I was just so saying. You're in TJ. You're in it. Well, looking back, well, looking back. What makes you think I believe the whole, oh, your opponent didn't pass yes. medical? Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah right. you're right. So, right. so back you to say that, it like that yeah. they're trying to stray away from Americans, even if you're Mexican. If you're a Chicano, going American, down there, Ameri- they don't care, bro. They don't want anyone beaten, and I understand why, but they don't want anyone wiping through their local guys. Mm-hmm. Right. They're trying to build up their guys again to have these... Brandon Moreno. It's almost like building up their market, right? Really? They're, trying, they're trying to build the market. Well, Eric Morales, uh, he's, he's retired now, but he fought Pacquiao, and he was one of the big TJ fighters. Mm-hmm. Um, Jaime Munguia is a TJ fighter right now, champion. And so they're trying to build that reputation, and I'm an American guy. Besides all, there was one other guy that was super shredded, super ripped. Shout out to Angel, uh, or Andrew, Angel Core. Uh, we debuted together. Uh, in Mexico, but he is a BKFC fighter. Hey. hey. He's 1-0. and They just gave him a draw. He really won. Shout out, Andrew. You won that fight. <laughs> and, uh, you won that fight, kid. You know, we know you did. <laughs> I'm so glad. I mean, you know, I know it's about me, but I show love. But, uh, I'm just, I'm proud of you, bro, for getting signed by BKFC. Nice. Because That's him huge. and I started at the same yeah. bucket in, in, in Mexico right there fighting, and, and he won as well. Mm-hmm. And with one pro boxing fight, he got signed to BKFC. Oh, bro. wow. You know, so you know, I'm thinking like, dude, well, if I don't go MMA, maybe, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know. Like, what's uh, this? Uh, can, can, that, I ask, can I ask you that question now? Well, I yeah. literally was going to, you were going to ask him too. Well, I, I was going to ask like, I mean, maybe. Would you ever fight in the BKFC? Oh, I wasn't going to ask that. That's, uh, that's what I'm going to ask. Yeah. I mean, well, he honestly, just brought yeah, it up. Bro, that's a great question. I, I, right now, absolutely, because what I can see is they're doing a good thing. They're growing. Yes, they are. That big fight wow. card that just got announced we were talking about. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. Here's the reason why. We're talking about Chad Mendez and, the, uh, yeah, Chad and, Mike, yep, and Mike Perry. Platinum. Oh, I but can't wait. You're going to watch this. See, I now all of a sudden that, you're stoked about I, it. That's what I mean. Like, because Karis, we had this talk for it and yeah. I told him, like, Sorry I'm, to if, I'm, not, you, I'm not really into the BKFC. Like, I'm not into He's it. He's not into it. Right, right. And I told him, I just, I didn't know if it was going to last. And he, you know, Karis with the stats, gave me the stats. I was okay. Like, I need a fight though that's really going to intrigue me. Like, and I right. need, I have it now. You do. Now, I'm going to watch oh, for it. Sure. I'm going to watch right. it. Which has got me concerned because for little guys like me, I know, well, my assumptions, I don't know. My assumptions are going to be they're investing in their Mike Perry's, their Chad Mendes. They are. They're, they're giving them the big checks. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then the little guys, like, I don't know if my boy Andrew's getting really, like, hella paid. That's <laughs> true. You know what I mean? Or, if they're, getting, Barstow, or they're getting slap, slap league money, slap power slap money, where they're getting oh, $2,000 to show and $2,000 oh, to win, some bullshit like that. It's like, no. Uh, bro, pay the these guys. The game is fucking <laughs> crazy, bro. And the thing is, is, like, it's a barbaric, brutal sport for mm-hmm. I don't know how much they're paying these guys. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not necessarily welcomed fully yet but uh, I think it's getting welcomed yeah. as just another fighting art mm-hmm. um, but uh, I think boxers definitely have shown some good shiny light in that game yes, yeah. they, you know, yes, they're they not have. on the ground but where the MMA guys shine light is the dirty boxing where they're allowed to clinch, which I like. Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. know, because you can't do that in boxing, which no. I think is bullshit. You know, like, because <laughs> I'm originally an MMA guy, bro. Like, yeah. I really think, hey, look, whatever, the, the, where, where boxing derives from in England, you know, uh, they would just have entertainment for just straight up hands, right? So right. they don't want wrestling and all that. But BKFC, they let them dirty box, bro. Yeah. You know, you can hold. Them grab a little bit. Yeah. Try to pull their head towards yeah, you. Overhook. You can overhook in boxing. I'm good with but, that. But the money would have to be right. But the, the exposure is there too, though, because like it would it would up my exposure mm-hmm. a little bit more. So here's the levels: you got like the UFC, and you got big time boxing, uh, you know, WBC, Showtime boxing, all these big time guys. 
Then you got like guys that are humbly lo- uh, small time like me. Right. Right. And then there's the middle. What's the middle? Middle is fighting at Pachanga, um, okay. Chichanti, right. Commerce, Chumash, all these like local casinos. Yeah. Right? Now, that is a good thing to be locally groomed through these middle stages. Right. But the clarity and the proof right now from what I can see, and it's working so far, is at, from a business standpoint, bro, if you guys are my fighters and I'm your manager, mm-hmm. I'm, I'm going to brief. If I'm confident about how to like really get you guys to like the top, yeah. my job is to keep you active, which is – and I'm pretty much speaking for my team right now. Okay, mm-hmm. The job is – because and this is this is the flip of the of the coinciding end. These YouTubers mm-hmm. tie that in. Uh, so there's money to be made at your level of skill. Right. Right. Okay. That's where these YouTube YouTube guys come mm-hmm. in. So uh, uh, these middle stream, these mid mid level guys that are legit, and yeah. you want to go through that, it, you're gonna go through wars, man. Right. And and, and the, you you should want to. If yeah. You want to keep getting better. I should want to. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now I will share with you. I was offered 12k. Uh, my, my manager said 13 at the, uh, after a few days of the first offering, yeah. but, um, listen, I could, $13,000. I'm a regular guy like you guys. I could use that, right? Yes. I can hundred percent. Oh yeah. My son. Yeah. Right? There's a lot of bills to pay with that. But here's the thing. <laughs> here's the thing. As a fighter, you know, Cameron Roger, you know, Ryan Karras, you, you know, that's your brand man. Mm-hmm. Your face, who you are is right. the brand. You're the product, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So you got to be careful with your product and, um, you can get knocked out at the top, at the bottom. The point is, is like, what's the goal? Um, we're trying to generate and, and make money. We're trying to make success. You're going to gain all the fans, all this. Let's not be stupid, okay? Um, I know both you guys can go to war right now with anybody. I just don't want to make sure. I want to make sure you're not doing it for peanuts. Mm-hmm. It's, you're right. It's Once you get paraded. paid for doing it. You get knocked out for in TJ. You got to be compensated. Yeah. Well, dude, that's what I'm saying. You got to be compensated. And the thing is, like, you know, I got, you know, I got kids. If yeah. I, if I get starched, like, why is daddy not moving? <laughs> Fuck, bro. Yeah. Like, Michael Chandler with the ice face. Well, dude, <laughs> well, I mean, you're in a coma. Yeah. You're in a coma. Well, the, is your babies and your uh, wife going to be able to like have food? Like you know, pay do you, rent? Would you like, want your like? Would you have your boys come to your fights? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. that type. Cool. I'm the whole like uh, Lothbrook type with my son. Uh, shout out Vikings. You know, uh, <laughs> I love that show Vikings. But uh, no, I'm I'm all, the Spartan mentality. I'm all about um, yeah. the proper culturing right, of right. little mm-hmm. warriors, man. Yeah, and you're doing a great job of it, man. Yeah. I, I mean, we we intermingle our families all weekend, bro, and it's it's fun. It's something it's, it's something that nice to see, especially we've grown and now we're you know we're both dads, and it's it's it's, it's nice. And you're doing a really good job with those three boys, man. Thank so, you. Man. So, no. so Matt, based on what you just said, after your fighting career, now I just thought of this question and have it written down. After your fighting fighting career, have you ever thought of being a manager? For boxers or MMA fighters, yeah, you, know, you sound like you'd be, <laughs> yeah, you know, really down to help people. Definitely my kids. Okay, I thought about that. I will start off doing like my own academy, like what you see here, with this nice gym. I'll have my own gym where uh, I, I create people, man. I create uh, fighters, and my my goal is uh, to create character. So you mm. don't have to compete. But uh, here's a little pitch. Uh, when I'm not actively fighting, I will have an academy, a fight academy, not just boxing, mm-hmm. where um, if my kids are not in school sports and they're not doing their homework, uh, yeah. they're going to fill that gap of time from school uh, at the gym. They're going to come right to the there gym, mm-hmm. do your homework at the gym. Mm-hmm. Um, if you're not doing wrestling in school or soccer or baseball or nothing like that, you're going to be at the gym. Mm-hmm. I want to relieve my wife of her current duty doing whatever, uh, doing her <laughs> job. Uh, now I want her to oversee the business and I'll have different instructors for different classes. So, um, that's I'm gonna, cool, man. Well, I'm going to invest in like that, youth that's programs, sick. That's like real that. sick. self-defense, anti-bullying. And then if you want to be a competitive fighter, I, I'll do privates. But, uh, uh, that time's going to come if I'm saying all this stuff where yeah. I might have to manage or promote and my experience will help my people. Yeah. yeah. No, that's, that, yeah. that's, that's sick, bro. I love hearing that. Mm-hmm. Love hearing that. Especially mm-hmm. with kids, bro. Like, mm-hmm. I, I mean, yeah. I, I coach soccer, so I, I love, you I know, love that. You yeah. know, that impact. Yeah, bro. It's huge. It's huge. Now, I, there's a couple, I actually have a few questions now from stuff you said earlier. <laughs> so, you know, you'd mentioned your, your buddy got picked up by BKFC. Now, I know like in soccer, we, we would have scouts like come out did, did the same thing happen? Yep. I guess like in the in the in in the you know boxing atmosphere, even the fighting atmosphere. Did you like? Do they? Do you guys have scouts that come out to then watch and then or like how just, does that or work? Or is it just your managers yeah. promoting? Uh, both, man. But but okay. absolutely, a lot of the times you do. Now here's where we get a little like holy shit. So uh, I met 
backstage before I walked out to my fourth fight. Okay. Um, some guy who is an announcer at all these venues in Mexico. Yeah. And I don't know his name. Probably shouldn't need to know it, but I do know a lot of the money that dictates a lot of the stuff out there. So I'm like the cartel. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So when, <laughs> when the business is being discussed uh, between like my manager, commissioners, all these guys, I know there's already... There can be corruption, there can be extortion, there can be exploitation, there can be the whole nine. Um, so when I'm, hey, Matt, I want you to meet so-and-so. I don't remember his name. That's all kind of like shook I was. Yeah. Of course, as a man, I'm looking at the guy like, I'll fucking beat this guy's ass. <laughs> definitely not thinking like that. Yeah. Right? Like, I'm, yeah. Like, I'm in Mexico, yeah. about to walk out. Right. Yeah. Who's this guy? Who's, why is he so special to, like, distract me right. to go off? For what I'm about to do. Right. I'm, right. I'm already getting... Yeah. With the program, I'm already, yeah. got, I'm already put that switch on right now. So yeah, uh, the switch is on, and it ain't going yeah, off. Yeah, don't, it's not don't, going don't off. try to mess with me right now. Right, and my promoter, my manager, he's looking at me like, "Hey, uh, he gives me a wink, like meet this guy." Like you have yeah. to say, you know? what's up. And I'm like, "Hey, absolutely, no thanks. Thanks for being here." And he's like, "Hey, you're a good fighter." Uh, he was an announcer at my second fight, uh, but he talked totally different off the mic, mm. and his, his breath smelled like cigars. Uh. He had uh, I don't I didn't wear my I don't want to be too flashy, but he, <laughs> he had a little Cuban bracelet, Cuban link bracelet. Yeah. 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 He, looked like narcos man okay <laughs> like he he's, yeah he's in it well bro, he wasn't wearing a tuxedo announcer like no. bruce buffer he yeah. was like all oh, like lounge actually no he smelled like weed not no. a cigar it smelled no. like weed you know so I, that's I, a good that's, that's a good smell i heard that's <laughs> a good i heard that's a real good cologne no, <laughs> very ther- therapeutic and medicinally <laughs> beneficial but no i knew the guy was living his way mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i mean so i smelt money i smelt his way mm-hmm. i smelt power mm-hmm. yeah so um what, what was the original question? Of, uh, do, the, do you guys have like uh, scouts? Sorry, do you, scouts are, like, yeah, there's scouts that come. Okay, out. so so this guy, yeah, my bad. This is why I brought him up. Sorry. Uh, apparently, he was scouting whatever he he like he wasn't working that night mm-hmm. uh, formally. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. So maybe he was working for himself. You know, yeah. kind of <laughs> calling Tony Tony Soprano later on, like, hey, yeah, that was a good yeah, 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 yeah. kind of business. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know. Um, Hey, I'm with it, man. You know, if, if I got smiles coming my way, uh, this is why, and I won't get off topic, but like I will reference like uh, Conor McGregor right. and Michael Chandler. They're about to fight. I like to use those guys as an example of two opposite ends of company men. You yeah. got Connor yeah. and the mark and the company man as a villain, mm-hmm. right? And then you got Chandler as the good guy. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But you need those guys. You have to. You have to. Right? You have so to. if you meet like a scout at these things, that, you know, you got to be either or that right. or else you're going to end up like one of these whiny UFC fighters that are deserving of every opportunity, but not necessarily because the opportunity that's mm, greenbacked yeah. needs green work. Well, yeah, work. Mm-hmm. yeah mm-hmm. you're right. You know? mm-hmm. You're right. If you don't market yourself. Benil you know, Dariush. Yeah. Oh, oh. You, know, you know, it's funny. <laughs> it's funny because yeah. that, that's going to transition to my next one because I know like, you know, Matt and I, we talk here and there and I've see, I saw a post actually where... He was at, you know, Kings MMA and training, and yeah. I'll let him bring up the two people that he had the uh, the pleasure of working out with, and, and you know, at give Kings us your, how, how was your your experience, you know, being in that, and do you even see yourself maybe going the the, the MMA, MMA route? route? Right. Okay. Yeah. No. Great question. I love it. Um, you know, so shout out to Kings MMA in Huntington Beach. I was only out there for about a month or two doing specific classes, Muay Thai, okay. and then MMA, uh, like light skill training. We do light sparring mm-hmm. um, on the same mat with like the pros. I wasn't a pro yet. But um, for that gym to welcome an outsider that wasn't even a professional yet, I was very impressed, man. Uh, Rafael Cordero. Mar- uh, numerous uh, he's one of the greats right there world yeah. champions yeah. bro mm-hmm. he's had uh, Mauricio Shogun Hua mm-hmm. under his uh, here, here's the world champions that he trained uh, Mauricio Shogun Hua Vanderlei Silva Jeez. Anderson Silva mm. uh, Fabricio Ferdum mm. who was a little dick to me but, <laughs> but I support why he was he was protecting yeah, like I get it um, uh, Bellator champions, all kinds of just world champions, okay? And uh, for an outsider to come in there with a whole dream energy, they, they don't really got time for that because yeah. they're already like doing high profile stuff. Right, mm-hmm. right. So the only reason why I was there was because of Marvin. Shout out Marvin Vittori. Um, ble- you know, this guy. Big shout out Vittori, bro. Dude. We're, and we're fans. We are big fans, by the way. Mm-hmm. I just messaged him one day as a nobody, right? Saying, hey, I'd love to do light sparring with you. Right. Um, uh, you know, I'd love to learn, and, and maybe if you can learn from me, because I'm a boxer, this and that. 
Uh, dude, he responded the whole nine. I'm really? totally ecstatic. Oh, wow. He's like, Jeez. he's like, just let me know when you want to come down here. No problem, bro. We'll train any time. That's so sick. So when I go down there, it was like this outsider, of course, like back for Reese Verdum and even like Kevin Gasolum to their own right, though. Of course. They don't know me. No. And they yeah. were just kind of giving me a stank face like, who's this guy? Mm-hmm. Right. right. So again, I get it. <laughs> right. But I think because they would see me like talking with Marvin a little bit here and there. They're just probably, probably protecting him. Like, hey, yeah, yeah. Marvin's young to them. You know? Right. True. Uh, but but Neil was cool, bro. Yeah. Really? yeah. He, he is super cool. Uh, like he always is on camera. Mm-hmm. Uh, he's that guy. You know, he has an Asian wife. I think she's I, Filipina. I just need I just need him to promote himself a little yes. bit. More. Yeah. Especially you know? after this, Charles like, Oliver like, fight. Like, you better I, say I something after this. I need you to promote yourself a little bit Because he's good. Because you have he's so good. many. He's so dangerous. Yeah. So, he's so good. Bro. Yes. So good. Who's that other guy? He's bald now, but he was a kickboxing world champion in the UFC. Um, he, he, I saw him uh, sparring with Benil, and bro, they go at it. They're going hard, bro. Benil yeah. and him. Yeah, no headgear, 16 ounce gloves, but in boxing, you yeah. know, like, I mean, if we're cracking each other, 16 ounce gloves. It still yeah. hurts. Yeah, you're feeling it. Yeah, you're feeling it. <laughs> so some of Especially from a professional, it. too, right? Dude, like, they mm. were kicking each other's shins, but they had shin guards. Yeah. I'm just saying, um, his, his Instagram name is Knockout Cancer, but he's a, he's a, He's a scary guy, um, uh, but no, Kings, Kings MMA, They're, they have all kinds of guys from Bellator, um, uh, one championship, all kinds of guys, UFC fighters, they welcomed me, um, I was in preparation to turn pro in boxing or MMA, which would ever come first, and to answer your follow-up question, yeah. um, I am in talks with my promoter, I specifically, you know, because I'm in control of my career, man, uh, and so... So I, I highly believe in that. So I told him, I said, hey, listen, I want an MMA. I do. I want an MMA okay. debut. Okay. I, I, I do want to have a We're going. fight pro <laughs> MMA at least once. But here's the thing. Uh, calculated so. I, I do want it to be against another boxer that is willing to entertain okay. turning pro in MMA. Okay. Mm-hmm. You know, okay. I want to mm-hmm. have it fair on paper right. at least. And this is not to my like, concern. It's to my control. You know, right. Because, look, again, I'm just getting my beak wet. Uh, if I'm gonna be worth the shit in MMA, it's more it's more of the bucket list thing for me with MMA. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. honest with you, mm-hmm. um, I'm gonna squeeze that lemon to the hardest with the boxing. Yeah, because I do think I can uh, definitely put the lights out on anybody. But um, I just uh, see a more realistic route if I keep getting better. And I you know I'm fucking good, man. I don't care. But if I if I keep proving to myself, right, have the six round fight. Mm-hmm. Let's can you even do an eight or a ten round fight? Mm-hmm. Man? When I'm done proving it to myself, then, you know, I'll, I'll leave all the glory and hope with boxing. Right. With MMA, um, opportunity and bucket list. Uh, it felt like a, like a YouTuber wanted to fight me. Like if Logan wanted to fight me in MMA, <laughs> oh, I'll boy. do it. Oh, like, boy. I'm in. I'll take every risk for MMA if the money's worth yeah. it. Yeah. But doing it just for, like, doing it yeah. with no money, it's got to be, like, just, like, a smart fight for me. Okay, yeah. so. Because I don't want to fuck up my boxing so, career. You know? So now. Right. Now, nowadays, it's, it, it seems that you brought it up to these YouTubers, right? And I want to ask, it's recent, Jake Paul, Tommy Fury, what do you think of that? Like, do you think Tommy won? Like, what are your yeah, thoughts? What I, I do your think son? he won. I do think he won. Okay. It's just not in the prettiest way, right? Yeah. He got knocked down, which gives you hope. And I, I have gained more respect for you, Jake, you fucker. Um, <laughs> but uh, I do think he got a little humble pie served to him. He did. Yeah. Um, Cause he, like I said, he's a, he's a fucking dork with it. He's, he's like, oh, got your hat. Oh, look, I like what he's doing. <laughs> I, I like what he's doing. I forgot about that. Got uh, your hat. You know, it's a Floyd. <laughs> got your hat. Got yeah. your hat. Listen, I like what he's doing, right? But his style, to me, I'm yeah. not mad at it. Yeah. I just look. I'm in this mix too, man. Fuck that. Like, yeah. You're a dork, bro. Like I have. Look, I my whole way of marketing is real. It's not fake. It's not fake. It's just, uh, hey, look, man. I can play that game. Mm-hmm. I'm more of the charismatic shit talker. Okay. Where um, I I like seeing that look in a guy's eye where it's like, oh, dude, don't don't fuck with him. All right. Okay. You know? So <laughs> so do what you're telling like, me well, is dude, what, you know? what you're telling me is if you could get a actually if you could get a YouTube fight right now, who would you call? Who out? would you choose? Who would you and well, why? Who would you call out? Well, and right. why? Okay. Who would you call out and why? Impuls- I- I- impulsively. Yeah, but like Logan but, right now. Lo, you call Logan him Logan. because of his stunt during Tommy and Jake's fight. Okay, which uh, also, you, you know, know when they gave him the mic. Yes, I didn't like that. That's what I makes didn't me like want that. to fight him now, just because, like, dude, I feel like uh, the Tommy rematch is going to happen. 
You know, Jake's right. going to fight nobody. He's going to get that. that he's going to double up on those millions. He's going to get that rematch. Money. I want him to fight Mike Perry. But go ahead. Keep going. Who, which one? I want Jake Paul to fight Mike Perry. Because they spar. Because they that. well, because Mike Perry's more of a he's still a, he fights with his hands. He's more of a hands guy versus yeah. a ground. And then they're going to fight six months in MMA. Right. So that's what I would that, hope would happen. But here's my thing. But he's going like, to run it back. I don't need Tommy. to see these YouTubers in MMA because it's not going to go right. They they. That's you know, that's kind of what I want to see. They're just they're just going to get <laughs> like mom, like like beat the fuck up. Well, I'll tell you who has a chance in MMA is Logan more than Jake. Yes, because yeah. he's, got, I've his, seen he's got his ground game. Yeah, have you saw that video with Paulo Costa? Yes, when he was right? rolling. Yeah, and yeah. So you can tell he has high school at least level or collegiate level uh, wrestling, and mm-hmm. I and I was impressed. He's got a decent so, base, right? Let's at least say that. Decent base. He's a big boy, so I'll be. I'll give him. I'll take my hat off. Like he'd probably have a better chance at winning in MMA against me because his size mm-hmm. um, and in his wrestling. Um, I'm wrestling experience too just not competitively but I have a lot to learn but I I want Jake or, or I want Jake or Logan ASAP I want KSI too oh. listen KSI I've done my <laughs> research on him mm-hmm. he's got power in his right hand um, like Jake he's a little wild, he's a little more wild than Jake but I'm not gonna say what I know would work on KSI. <laughs> I, I know, I know, um, oh. I know right now intelligence would work on Logan mm-hmm. and KSI. Yeah. Jake, it would be experience and intelligence, but you need a little bit of power too. You need a little bit of everything with Jake. But the mm. only confidence I have with Jake is I just feel like my mileage is a little more than his. Okay, because mm. yeah. I'm very fair. Jake's got what it takes. Yeah, to, yeah. To, uh, he is a legit boxer, bro. Yeah. Now I'll give him that with fighting Tommy. You know, even though Tommy's a pretty boy, Tommy's a legit boxer. Mm-hmm. Um, look, he's got eight fights, bro. Yeah. Okay. Still young. But I feel like he's young still young. See, I, res- I, I respect. I respect all. Of them. Like right. here, like I respect what they're doing because they. I mean, they're. I I feel like a Jake. He's doing kind of like I, I want to do. I want to. I want to get into boxing, but he's actually doing it. He's yeah. fucking doing it. And he's promoting right. himself. Now, to he's get promoting into himself. Big fights. I mean, I don't have as much money as this guy does to do it as as I guess. Um, flamboyantly as he does right? but now I don't like I've reached a point where I don't need to see them fight MMA guys like if you're going the boxing route I need to see you fight boxers yeah. right. people who are specializing in this craft because mm-hmm. I right. think it is a craft mm-hmm. now if you're going to go the MMA route, route then I want to see you fight MMA like I don't want to see you fight hey I'm going to do MMA, MMA but yeah I, but I'm going to do a boxer see, no I don't want to see that but, right. I don't want to see that and that's why I say Mike Perry because he potentially is going to fight he already signed with PFL we know that, right? So right. therefore, if right. he's going to fight another boxer right now, you're, you just said, I'd rather see him fight but here's an the thing. MMA guy. Well, so that's, why I'm, that's why I'm saying deal, Jake, right? Jake, Jake is not going to enter the PFL, bro. I'm telling you right I, now. I, I, it's I, all, I don't see it's, it happening. I don't see it. Well, it's just on, a play. Pause, pause. Didn't, okay. they, didn't he have a customized contract where um, when Jake does go to PFL, it's going to be customized rules? Yes, so it, it's a different league. <laughs> yeah, in PFL, it's like a, it's called an entertainment weight class or like yeah. something like he does, that. Yeah, he's right? not even involved in like the main set. Not he's the his rankings. own little off little yeah. set of yeah. yeah, yeah. And part of that contract is he f- boxes first, and then six months later, they do MMA. They do MMA in PFL. Uh, yes. Well, whatever yeah. contract he tried to do, because that's what he that's what he wants. Well, Tyson to do. Fury and Nagano might have that customized. Yes. Uh, yeah. Like MMA gloves. Well, yeah, but I, I, don't, on but I don't want to see that. Though. I don't want to see Francis against uh, Tyson, Tyson Fury, bro. No, that's gonna be. It, it has to be Wilder. It has to be Wilder. And I even think Wilder would take him out. Bro. I think so too. This is how, boxing but here, wise, but right? But, here, but here's the thing, like boxing wise, I, for Ngannou, I would rather him worry about one thing, which is the right hand, <laughs> right? He could hopefully evade that. Yes. Now we both know Ngannou has some power, mm-hmm. right? So yes. give him a little bit of training with the boxing. I think Ngannou, he could he could take one to give one. But I think his give is a little bit more than what Wilder could give. Mm-hmm. To be, that's my personal opinion. Right. I, I think when you're big like Ngannou or a big guy like Tyson or a big guy like Joshua, it's yeah. fair. It's fair to say, being big like that is freaking great if you have the smarts to 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 deliver it. Because you see a lot of big guys get their ass whooped because they get fatigued. Mm-hmm. Okay. So once they get fatigued, so like Wilder has been in the trenches twelfth round with with Tyson Fury. Yeah. Three times, I believe. Jeez. And um. <laughs> And so I think if, if Nanganu fought Deontay, he'd have to hurt him early because, bro, if he doesn't, I know Nanganu will get gassed out. Yeah. You know, he's, yeah. he's mm-hmm. big. And I, not used to and I, 12 I, rounds I know he's not intellectually right, right. sound in boxing yeah. as a big guy. Yeah. So let me ask you this. What, why did Joshua lose to Usyk? It wasn't because of size. It was because of his smarts weren't as smart as Usyk. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Usyk was just playing with him, you know, staying moving, just fucking with him, like luring out little feints and... Joshua is just not as smart as Usyk. Yeah. Because if he was, 
I'll tell you right now, uh, all that shit wouldn't have worked that <laughs> Usyk did, and that would enable Joshua to do what he wants to do, plus the size difference. Mm. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So that's why, uh, you know, so size, so size does, size doesn't matter until size knows what it's doing. Right. Okay. That's a good way to look. And at that's it. the only reason why they they made weight classes. So Logan Paul be the one, huh? Oh so, yeah. So, so you wouldn't. You're, you're you don't you don't drink prime. Man. <laughs> <laughs> Do you drink body armor? Instead? <laughs> sponsor me? And this is this is Logan's, I believe. It is. It, yeah. it, prime. If you sponsor me, I'll fight anyone you want to fight. Pay me. You know what I'm saying? I'll I'll fight on that damn triller or whatever the hell you guys got going on. It tastes um, good though, bro. It tastes fucking good. Yeah, what? I love that shit. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I'm humble, bro. I bet it does. Pay me. I, I got a question on the YouTuber guys because Ariel Hawani just had KSI on his show. I think it was two weeks ago or this past week. And KSI only said that his only fight that he wants to fight is Jake Paul. That's the only one that makes sense for him right now. Um, who do you see winning in that fight? Um, Jake. Really? Yeah, because I feel like he won't get hit with the shit Logan got hit with. Okay. And mm. KSI beat Logan in their debut because uh, they fought twice. Mm-hmm. Right? The, fir- the, set, the rematch was the official pro fight. It's a split, right? They split it, right? What's that? The KSI 1-1 one, one. and then Logan 1-1, one, one, right? Or no? Uh, no, KSI won both, I believe. Oh, wow. Really? Oh, yeah. shit. Okay. okay. And I think maybe that's what amped Logan to be like, well, let's go pro, no headgear. You know, like maybe I can. <laughs> but like, so Logan looks like an athletic guy that has volume. Yeah. He's kind of lean. He's a big boy. Mm-hmm. But he, you know, when he was fighting Floyd, he, uh, what was concerning to me was he had a lot of volume for a bigger guy, mm. you know? And he's in shape because he wasn't like a jack guy. But he's just yeah. a bigger guy. Yeah. You know, with a lot of volume, doing all that crazy, like just hit all every button on the video. Just, like, <laughs> but still, that could actually still like. Yeah. Even though it's ugly, it could have hurt. Floyd. That was ugly. Right. <laughs> that was not tiny, pretty at all. Floyd's little. But back back to this. Jake, I feel like he's the most experienced out of those dudes. I feel like because he trains here uh, close, like in California, if he's not out in Puerto Rico, camped out. But um, Jake, I can tell, you know, I have a keen vision on it right from my stuff. So when I see Jake, I can tell he's putting in the work. I just feel like I'm better. Right. Straight up, bro. I just feel like he's me. Like, probably four or five years ago. Right. Mm-hmm. And uh, I want to try things on all these fuckers, bro. <laughs> well, but, you know. Jake, uh, if you ever get a chance to listen to this and you need a tune-up fight, before you go back and fight Tommy Fury, <laughs> I'm just saying, give my boy a call. I don't want to call it a tune-up fight, though, because Matt might take you out. I mean, <laughs> well, hey, I want him to think that yeah. so that he does it. And then, and then guess what? We want that rematch clause so then we could get the bag. <laughs> hey, I want my boy getting the bag. I want to call Matt and say, Matt, you ready for that red panties night? Hey, bro. <laughs> listen, I, I am, man. And I'll tell you this with Jake, bro, um, I can tell there's little things in his little fighter world as a fighter for himself yeah. that are identical with me as a fighter as a boxer so that's why i've earned respect for him mm-hmm. but um he, he you know uh just just be careful little jake you know like just <laughs> don't don't feel too entitled to your your claims of confidence uh if it comes off disrespectful or offensive to other fighters mm-hmm. unless you're trying to fight them then i then that's that whole technique of getting that fight but um who knows? I've experienced my own things too of being too comfortable, being buddy buddy with like guys on the come up, and then the other pros when I was an amateur didn't like me because right. I was just trying to be uh, accepted, bro. Right. Yeah. So Jake's You're trying, trying to too a, hard a little bit. Right. Try, it, well, how about this? It definitely looks that way <laughs> to the guys that are already established. Yes. Yeah. But then um, that same guy that's trying too hard, he'll look back at his younger self because I have, and I'll be like. Ah oh, man, I just really wanted to be better and better and better. And now looking back, you don't got to do it that way. But I never knew that. You didn't know. Yeah. I didn't know. You, you know. And you don't know unless so you have experience. That's why I give Jake a little bit of room of leniency. But if he's um, if he's a little disrespectful with certain things, I, I don't like that shit, man. You know, I don't like that shit. <laughs> yeah. You know. So let me ask you this. I know. So your record, right? Let's tell everybody your record. Mm-hmm. What's your record, pro? Four and oh, four knockouts. Yeah. Four knockouts. <laughs> so. I have never had the pleasure of knocking somebody out. Nope. What is that feeling when you you knock them out? Either the ref's doing the count or they're just fucking out on the count. Like, what's that feeling like? It's proper, man. I'll tell you that. <laughs> uh, uh, as an amateur, even when you're sparring, uh, when you go hard, which, I, I, again, I don't recommend it no more once you already know. But, nah, man, when you, when, when you have headgear on and you have, like, sparring gloves, you know when you crack a guy. Yeah. 
man, I probably would have put them out if I had yeah. like 10 if, ounce if gloves you had 10 on. And no headgear. Well, the material is different too. No headgear, right? So it's just straight skin and temple. Like there's no, there's nothing in between that. Yeah. Um, listen, man, the wraps for a fight are different. They're like a cast. Really? Where it's mm. like, hey, let's go do boxing oh. training. And you right. wrap your hands with stretchy wraps. Right, right, right. 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 <laughs> oh, man. That thing where and they see the yellow or whatever, the red that they keep doing? Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and listen, man, the gloves are different. Okay. So like we can put on a glove, a training gloves. Um, so I didn't know this, but I'll just, I'll just tell you real quick. Training gloves, manufacturers of companies, they don't want you to be mad with their product. They want it to last long, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So training gloves typically are built to last and, and withstand a lot of beating. Okay. Right? So sparring gloves and the foam in that is meant to like really be a good protection and cushy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And durable when you're hitting it on stuff. Fight gloves are completely different. Really? They're not even made the same. And they look the same. They're gloves, right? No, they're <laughs> not. Um, I don't know if there's any. Uh, I'll show you later. I got some yeah. at the house cam. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. there's horse hair. And Cleto Reyes is my favorite glove. Mike Tyson, De La Hoya, um, Pacquiao. A lot of like puncher fighters like this because you, I mean I'll say it everyone you can manipulate the padding um, you're not supposed to it's not legal to do it right but what I mean is I don't want to say manipulate but uh, so you put the glove on you notice right now it feels pillowy mm-hmm. eerie mm-hmm. yeah the padding isn't like foam and kind of dense mm-hmm. to absorb right. right it's really airy to where like there's all this like um, horse hair and thin padding to where your knuckles like a cast right like even if my knuckles are hard here yeah once you tape that with athletic tape like like white athletic tape yeah. that you spat with, right? Mm-hmm. When you're putting that, like athletic adhesive tape, that's hard shit. Man. It is. Right? So when you have a cast and you put it through that glove and you feel like the density of your knuckles and in your cast going through the horse hair and meeting that thin leather, yeah. it's just like, bro, Ooh. this is not. Ooh. Is this legal? Like, like, <laughs> you're but, like, this isn't really that pad no, anymore. Not, wow. at all. not anymore. So you got to, where it derives from the concept of making legal gloves, it's not to give padding or protection to the fighters. It's not, it's just, okay, where are we going to draw the line with what's legal? Right. Mm-hmm. Right? So, that, okay, it has to be 10 ounces. So where manufacturers and companies get fancy is that we're going to try and make a glove that still meets the, the requirements. The 10 ounces. Yeah. 10 ounces. Right. But I'm not going to put 10 ounces of like, like a durable, dense material, right? I'm going to have the same weight, but like something that can be like mixed around. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Right. Mm-hmm. If you had beat Skittles in there, they'll, they'll spread <laughs> to your, your fist coming through. Right, right. right. They'll spread on the side. Right. It's kind of how the padding is in these fight gloves. Oh, oh shit. Okay. <laughs> Interesting. So if, if you yeah. notice Pacquiao and, and Mike Tyson, uh-huh. um, and to their own righteousness, we all do it. Uh-huh. They'll kind of, and well, Mike talks well, about it. I see them sit there going like this. Well, they're, they're, and they're rolling it. I was punching the brick wall with my, with my gloves after they got signed already with the commissioner. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not doing nothing shady, but like I'm just like hitting that foam. You're trying to get it into position so a little bit. Yeah. On the back of yeah. my hand. Because now you have more padding here. Mm-hmm. And this is the reason why Floyd Mayweather uses Grant gloves for winning. It has more protection on the back hand. These toothpick bones are easy to break. Bro. Yeah. They're easy to snap. Yeah. They're easy to snap when you hit. Boom. The force behind your knuckles can snap it. Just but pushes m- it. But more when you're blocking a shot. Like answer the phone. Boom. Block a shot. A guy's like. Boom, trying to hit you with a hook. Mm-hmm. His knuckles can break these little bones, Ooh. right? Just block it. Mm-hmm. Oh. So the padding on these gloves, when you go like that, it works in your favor because the knuckle is right there on the surface area that you're hitting with. And then now most of that padding is for protection on your backhand right, right here. Mm-hmm. And that's why I like that glove. Interesting. Now, the guys were doing it. It's illegal now. You can't do a thing called skinning or cuffing. Yeah. Now, what that is, is the material of the boxing glove on the fight gloves yeah. are a lot like soft and like looser leather. Yeah. So what I mean is you can like literally grab the back of the glove and, and pull, it? It. pull it. Pull it. So now like it looks so it tight. So it up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And now you're pulling that padding to, to back. To the back, yeah. And then when it's back, now you tape the wrist and it holds it down. Oh. oh. So you have less towards the... Yeah, and it's yeah. less towards material, your knuckles now. Less drag. It's more aerodynamic yeah. friendly. Um, De La Hoya, Pacquiao, a lot of Puerto Rico boxers, they all would do it. And there's a logo uh, on the glove to where they would tape all the way up to the logo or a little bit on top of it yeah. where my wrist naturally is. But now the cuff of the wrist of the glove is like naturally down here. <laughs> and they say you can only tape that much now. So there's a lot of like flexing in the glove. A lot glove. of give right, and everything. Right. right. You can have more of like a long tape. And when it's more, when it's pulling that material, if, if it's like a bigger glove, and then you pull it down and then tape it, cinch it tight right here. Yeah. And it's skinny here. 
now the glove isn't as big because it got like pulled down, mm-hmm. and now it's easier to like split the guard, like boom. You know, it's easier. To and they're gonna feel a little bit Dude, more because there's yeah, less material yeah, on the end of the glove, right? Right there, that's crazy. Jeez. There's a little inside. Check. You learn yeah, something yeah, new bro. every day. Look, look at your, <laughs> knee, right? your knee, right? The inside where like your MCL ideally is, yeah, right, or your ACL. Those tender parts on the outside of your knee. So, like, if the ref is, um, I'm just getting. Uh, you got me on. I'm on a dirty tactic. Uh, <laughs> no, you're good. You're tangent good, you're right good. now. Go ahead. Let me, let me drop some uh, gems real quick on the podcast. Yeah. So hopefully, the viewers will like this. You guys will like this. Um, it's dirty, man. Um, you know, Victor showed me a couple of dirty moves. <laughs> <laughs> or teeth. Thank you, Victor. <laughs> well, he did them to me. <laughs> oh, fucker. But I'm not even mad at him. You gotta I'm, learn. No, I'm thankful. Yeah. Well, well, yeah. Th- he explained uh, it to me. I'm thankful that he. Uh, so, for example, when I would spar with Vic, and yeah, you take it easy on me. Mm-hmm. Uh, just those few times, uh, he would uh, kind of lean with his kneecap. On my inner knee, where it's tender, where that ACL or somebody grabs, like tries to squeeze your leg. Yeah, 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 yeah. So he would just kind of like bend his knee and lean forward into my knee, yeah. and it'd make me uh, have to reposition my base, like up. And then right when you did that, that bam. Second of like, mm-hmm. uh, bam. Yeah. Right. So he's timing it. Right. He's like, man, every time I rip that uppercut, it's because I get close to you. You know, kind of like press up on you. You're, you're, you're thinking of all kinds of things. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. But that one thing I didn't know of, he knew I didn't know of, and it didn't, <laughs> and it worked. So I ain't gonna lie, I'll fucking try it too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, like, of course. Say, they, 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 yeah, because they add that to your arsenal yeah. now. You've learned now. Well, but, and, and in boxing, you can't wrestle. So, like, any type of palming is a part of wrestling. Yes. Like, if you're, if you're grabbing, do, uh, if, you're, if, you're, if you're doing an arm drag, yeah. you know, and you pull the elbow, or if I do a collar tie, so yeah. you can't hold people down, Muay Thai clinch. So you can't as well grab their gloves and pull it down. But I, think mm. I, I don't know if I explained it to you, but I was just uh. talking about this. Lomachenko, he's smart. They interviewed him. They go, hey, what were you doing there against the ropes? Um, you, were, you were able to like remove his gloves from blocking his face, and you were able to hit him. Now they're setting him up with incriminating himself, but he's smart. <laughs> he goes, oh, he didn't use the word grab. Of course not. Right? He said hit. He mm-hmm. goes, oh, no. I hit the glove. I hit the glove down. And now, so it's out of so the way. So open it yeah. up. Boom. To them. But mm-hmm. really, that's shout out to Big G, Robert Garcia's dad, who trained <laughs> Fernando Vargas. Yeah. They would teach. That's Oxnard, bro. Fuck that. <laughs> <laughs> that's Oxnard. And that's some of the pride I love about Boxnard. Oxnard, they, you know, say you do like right, left, right. Yeah. Um, with that last shot, let's say like your right hand, right, left, right, post it. Leave it there on him, on, on his gloves. He's up against the, the, the ropes. Right, left, right. But that right isn't a hit. It's a grab. Pulls his hand down. And setting that up. Hand. Yep. Boom. Bam. Right? Yep. Boom. 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 This side. You can keep going. Hit angles on that. There's all kinds of ways you can do it. Mm-hmm. Um, Interesting. It's not necessarily legal, but yeah. even the refs know that's part of the game, man. I, I so saw if one. If it's obvious, they'll call it. You know? I'm glad you said I saw one literally the other day. Somebody put a post. They said they put their right hand up by their face right here, and then you hit right here to where your elbow goes up yeah and then it opens up your rib right here oh yeah and yeah, then yeah they yeah. just do that body shot yeah, because yeah. all he did was just hit the hit the glove up so his elbows weren't well, down can, in that you little can space rip an uppercut to the gut yeah right? or you, you hit to the body like an uppercut boom double it up but that second one is you, you're you're under it's, it's palm open up you just pull that elbow <laughs> pull that elbow but switch like that right, right? so here so it makes here. it pull it up and just opens it up boom boom boom, boom. Oh, wow. Have you ever dropped, right? some, have you ever dropped wow. somebody on a body shot? Uh, humbly in the in the beginning, but with the guys moving around now, like they, they you can land body shots. You don't they, want they to. It. Yeah. And I'm going playful one right now, right. too. Right. But I, that last fourth fight, I'm yeah. going to be honest with you, bro. Um, you know, thank God he, he he threw the towel in at the uh, the third round. He didn't want to come out. Mm-hmm. Um, it felt a little weird because, yeah, I won because he quit. Yeah. But, like, I was on a little, like, little blaze there. My first three fights, like, I'm knocking dudes out. And so this guy it was a TKO. It was a, technically, it was a t- it was a knockout by yeah. a technical knockout right. because he pretty much like submitted uh, verbal submission. He's like, no, nah, I'm fucking done. Like, I'll take my fight pay. I'm out. Right? Right. I'm done. Mm-hmm. Like, I think right. he was thinking, this is why I brought it up. I was going to his body a lot, the most uh, out of all the fights. But I shouldn't have been fighting at heavyweight. Again, I was eating tortas. <laughs> <laughs> I'm an Oxnard, bro. Uh. You know, I'm training at the UFC gym and Oxnard doing like bag work a lot. And I, yeah. I cut weight and I do a lot of strength training there. Mm-hmm. And I'm like like the boxing dude over there. So they show love. But the point is, is uh, 
when I get out of the gym in Oxnard, bro, there's all kinds of like taco trucks. Yeah, of course. Oh, bro, of course. Best bro. food mm-hmm. is in Oxnard, bro. So, um, San Diego's pretty good, too. Well, 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 <laughs> well we're going to find out after this interview. We're definitely going to try some Mexican food. Hey, I miss here. Lolitas. And, uh, and, uh, hey, Lolitos? shout out to Lolitas down in Chula Vista, <laughs> tacos baby. Tacos El Gordo. Yeah, uh, Tacos El Gordo. Yeah, like, yeah we got that. on the Trumpo. The little, oh, like, yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. But, oh, hey, good stuff. out here, uh, hey, Carnitas del Rey. My sponsor. Hey. You want Carnitas? Go, give him a shout out. Give him a shout out. Right. Carnitas El Rey, yeah, baby. My, I got a Carnitas El Rey. They took care of me. I won't disclose how, how much money or this and that, just just so there's no conflict. We're good. But they took care of me, man. And um, uh, great people, uh, hardworking people. You know, they're they're a food service. They don't have to care about me as a fighter. But listen, man, they they were already associated with like Mikey Garcia. Shout out Mikey. I believe he, he's a world champion of four different weight classes. Really? Uh, for sure, at least three. Um, but Mikey's another hero locally. Yeah. Um, I've met Mikey briefly uh, once or twice. Uh, I went into Robert's gym when he was still here. Okay. Um, dude, they're great guys, man. But listen, there ain't no geeks either. They're, you know, they, they're, they're street smart too. They'd be like, <laughs> what's up, bro? Like, yeah. they're, they're not all um, like a superficial. Like, oh my God, how are you? They're like, right. what's, yeah. what's up, up dude? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, what's up? <laughs> they welcome me and my wife and uh, as fans. And I got a little bit of heat from that because, like, Brandon Rios was there. And him and Victor Ortiz were former, like, best friends. And, oh. dude, check this out. I go, Here's another story. <laughs> so I go to Robert Garcia's gym. Pacquiao and Maidana just fought. And, oh, um, shit. Uh, and, and, of course, Floyd won. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Brandon was in preparation for Manny Pacquiao, right? This is what back – I, I think I – was living in San Diego, and uh, I went to like National City or somewhere else. Somewhere I watched that fight. But anyways, me and my wife went to Robert Garcia's gym in Oxnard. Brandon was in camp for Pacquiao. I go in there as fans. And right. It was the new gym. They don't train there no more. But mm-hmm. all Lomachenko and all those dudes took over that gym. Okay. Uh, eventually. But so anyways, we go in there, and out of nowhere, bro, some of the the Mexican homies were like, "Hey, fool!" Like telling Brandon. Yeah. And he's like, "Qué onda? What's up?" And he's like. That's fucking, that's Victor's homie right there. <laughs> and Brandon's like, man, quit, why are you guys trying to start shit? Because I was kind of like in fan mode. I was okay, like, I okay. I was a good moment with Brandon. Like, hey, Brandon, right. uh, I don't want to like uh, take your time, but uh, right. you know, it's an honor to meet you, bro. And he was, he's so cool. He was, he's a regular guy. He's like, oh, yeah, no, nice. likewise, bro. What's up? What's your, what's, yeah, your, yeah, yeah. what's your deal? So I'm just doing regular talking with him. But then um, it rang a bell. Uh, Brandon was like, what? Wait, what? And he's like, no, that's Victor's boy, bro. Like. Cause they, they, they pulled up like Instagram or Facebook or some shit. Yeah. Of me and they're like, eh. The receipts. Uh, they got the receipts. <laughs> bro, yeah. So Brandon looked at me kind of like. Ah, oh, shit. So that's your, that's your boy? Or yeah. Like, I said, hey, bro, whatever you guys got going on. That's not me. Uh, yeah, I have no piece of that. Yeah. yeah. It's not yeah. my business. And, uh, but, but the reason why I'm bringing this up is those guys are jokesters. They're any, gen- like any locker room we get roasted by the guys. Mm-hmm. That's all Robert Garcia and all his, his, his team jives. Love that. You know, but you have to have thick skin around those guys. <laughs> right. They're even roasting my wife like in front of, well, me and my wife. They're yeah. like, what? They knew we were married, but I'm holding her hand. Coming, yeah. Like, are you guys siblings? <laughs> my, I started laughing. I was like, what, Robert? He goes, you guys look alike. <laughs> he goes, they're your sister, your, your cousins, right? And I'm like, bro, it's my wife. We're bro. kissing cousins. <laughs> 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 like West Virginia or whatever. But he was like, nah, okay, my bad. I thought you guys were related. And I was like, no. nah. That's funny. But, you know, hey, look. That's that's what is here to have as a joy, man. You see, like Robert Garcia, uh, the first Oxnard World Champion boxer, training twenty-something world champions like Kelly yeah. Pavlik, uh, Sergio Mar- Maravilla Martinez, all these guys, bro. Brandon Rios, Victor, all these guys. He trained with Fernando Vargas during the Olympic trials, or I think they were on the Olympic team for a little bit. Um, but like Robert and Fernando Vargas are getting trained by Big G, the dad, bro. <laughs> you know, dude, that's 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 sick. But here's the thing about local resentment, bro. All right. uh, I started learning, like, even Brandon Rios. Even I learned a lot from, like, Victor Tommy, Victor Ortiz, Brandon Rios, Fernando Vargas, all these badasses out of Oxnard. Yeah. Even Robert. They would get <laughs> beef, bro. Right? And uh, maybe they're not always innocent. Yeah. But uh, I'm not, like, saying I'm big time. But I'm starting to I – I do have my own taste of local resentment. Right. And um, I get it now. Now it's like uh, I have to train and, like – 
a private, you know, this is a nice gym here. Shout out MV Boxing. Um, without Manolo and, and the owner here, uh, we wouldn't be able to do this beautiful Yeah, set, hey, thank, thank, thank you, you guys. Thank you, Manolo, man. Thank you, right. uh, MV Boxing and Fitness. We greatly appreciate it, man. Thank awesome. you so much. Awesome guy. And, and, and the, the guy who runs a boxing program here, he does a, a great job with me because he knows his shit. He comes from Colonia and all these guys I'm talking about. Yeah. You know, so, um, yeah, you know, this, this – Eight, the 805 in Oxnard is the boxing capital of the West Coast. Um, I just, I'm just grateful to have learned uh, the, the mentality of what makes these fighters confident. Yeah. And because they've made it to the big time. Right. So that's my little little boy hopeful. Out <laughs> yeah. there, you know? Well, I, I could tell you this, bro. I think you're on the right trajectory. You're definitely. You I are. think. And in, 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 in lastly, I think this is going to go into to this question here, and it's what will you know your future look like. What, what do you picture your future looking like? Can I add to that too? Yeah. As far as your future, with your future, what's your goals for 2023 and the future, right? Pretty much on top of that. Yeah, you know, uh, let's just say all the hopes that I hope for, like, don't happen, right? Like, say if I don't get, like, a dream uh, money fight or a big-time, uh, like, fight or deal, uh, I just want to make sure I start at home uh, with the town that deserves all the credit. Like, I'll, I'll clarify this. Oxnard, right? I wasn't born here. My wife was born and raised. My children and, and all my wife's family are all from here in Oxnard, right? Okay. But I used to live here too. When I was a two-year-old child till I was five, I lived in Oxnard. Nice. Okay? My, my, my father had to have a gun. My stepfather had to have a gun because sh shit's real, man. Oxnard ain't nothing to play with. The gangbanging's real. Yeah. Um, the fighting's real. But... Again, uh, I moved back here when I joined the military. I lived here again uh, for another four years before I met you. Yeah. Thank you um, for your service. Thank you, brother. Yeah, thank a you. Eight years thank in the you. Navy, and, you know, thank you. Nice. Thank you for all that. Still government contracting. But um, where I see myself in the future is being accepted by the town that taught me the mm. beauty to have as a boxer, a pro mm. fighter in Oxnard. I just want to yeah. be, if I can get, I'm already getting accepted by the people that accept me here. Um, because listen, man, anything that I have to claim for me, like, look at me, I, I, I'm Team Terry, all this stuff, mm -hmm. it started in Oxnard. I was living in El Rio. I know that's like a, a rival area of La, La Colonia. It's like, <laughs> yeah. but I'm not a gangster. I'm not, you know, respect to all right, uh, right. hard knocks of life. I get it, man. It, it's a whole nother topic, right? But like, if, if you come from the streets, man, like, I, I totally get it. You know, you, you, if you don't have love at home, you got to find it somewhere. So, right. so I respect all the chingon and, and 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 tough guy um pride that this town has to offer mm -hmm. and it was directed in boxing as well mm -hmm. so if i have anything out of this um i want to give back to what gave to me mm -hmm. so um i owe all the credit you know love and shout out to lamore california I'm, i grew up in lamore california as a navy brat um there's fighters out there and i have a lot of my support honestly yeah from here but from back home too which i'm so grateful for yeah. um but uh, I, I do owe the mentality of, of what I'm doing now to Oxnard. Um, I said I was going to say this earlier, but like, you know, uh, I've lived in Oxnard. I still have family in Oxnard. Um, I have moved to Camarillo once I started having children just because of certain opportunities and programs that I want them involved with right now, how young they are. Right. Um, there's beautiful children and loving children all over the world, including Oxnard. That yeah. um, Listen, man, it's just it's rough here. And, yeah. I, and like I said, Oxnard is nothing to play with. But um, if I said I, I want to give back mm -hmm. and, and, and in the future, I definitely would like to have a gym maybe in Oxnard where there's a lot of young kids that their parents are working doubles, a lot of Hispanic families where they both parents are working four jobs under one roof. Mm. So a lot of kids fall into gangs, man. Yeah. And if Robert Garcia left for his own righteous reasons, uh, I'd like to probably replicate what he showed to the community. And that is this. Um, his programs that he benefited off of and kids benefited off of is what I want to do as well. So I want to have a youth program where after school, if kids, they have nothing to do but fill the time with homework, but they're not doing homework. Yeah. Yeah. And they're doing drugs and, and doing uh, active gang operations. Right. I, you know, if they don't want to do that stuff, I want them to come to my gym. Okay? Yeah. Uh, I will do a nonprofit. Um, I don't need to make money off the kids, man. I'll, you know, I can make money off of privates and other programs that adults want to do. Right. But um, I think that's a definitely learning. It's the bigger topic. picture, right? Yeah, it's it's get it's getting them off of the streets. Mm -hmm. It's getting Dude. them, you know, doing the right thing. Because yeah. we, I think, I mean, growing up, I mean, you know, I went to San Diego High School. I, I got to see a little bit of the other side. Never really got into that stuff. But you can see how easy it is. Oh yeah. Right. It's easy to get mm -hmm. pulled in a direction that mm -hmm. maybe um, you think is fun, but really it, it's not. And I think having these outlets for, for kids, for even not just kids, for teenagers, 
it's it's a way of showing them that there's another route. Mm-hmm. There's another route mm-hmm. that yes, you could put in the work. You could put in that. Now we're not saying you're going to be successful at it. It's going to be hard too, yes. right? And they need to see that side too. Dealing with uh, adversity. Yeah. That's right. going to be the big thing. Because I think a lot of kids, and I'm just speaking a little bit from my coaching here, is a lot of kids struggle when they meet adversity. They don't know how and to deal with they it. They don't know how to deal with mm-hmm. it. And I think having a place that's going to you know, have that for them too because they're going to deal with adversity coming in your environment too, right? Mm-hmm. You're going to get the kid that, hey, coach, I, I want to fight, coach. Yeah, but you ever been hit before? <laughs> right. Nah, I haven't. Well, now you're going to learn. And now you're going to learn how, you know, to not get hit. How? So I think, dude, hearing that, that's amazing. That, oh. That's that's well, huge. And real quick, I know we're, we're pressing for time here soon, but I just want to mention this while, while we're on the air. Yeah, go um, ahead. Where it's going to impactfully hit me deeper with this, like, youth program stuff is I'll, I'll, I won't get too crazy into it, but I'll share briefly real quick. Um, you know, I, I was bullied, man, in middle school. Uh, I had a couple bullies, and uh, he knows who he is. He, to this day, I seemingly, he's this guy out there. He's living like a regular, cool little life or whatever. But because of him, he is part of the reason, one of the reasons I'm a fighter today. So mm. back to the kids. Programs that I will run, for sure, are anti-bullying. But yeah. um, the real reason of this is uh, I feel like I'll be more, most resourceful uh, helping the kids with problems that have already been victims. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, I'll say this. Look, uh, um, at, at 14, and I know you don't know this, but um, look, I, I was molested at 14. I wasn't raped. Um, but I know if I would have had just the whole, the whole everything of like a fighter at a young age, I probably could have deterred from that. Mm-hmm. And, and more selectively, it wasn't necessarily like a predator thing from like an adult. Yeah. But it was like an elder, like, Big homie, where yeah. I was like 13, 14. It was around that, that transition from like 13 to 14. And uh, the big homie in the clique. You know, because I was in the streets too. Like, I love my dad, but like, um, and, and I always love my dad. But like, the point is I had to ask, answer a lot of questions myself. Yeah. And um, I know if I, if, I, if I just, look, it's never going to happen to my fucking kids, right? So um, <laughs> yeah. I just know if I would have had some type of reference when I was in that position of being vulnerable, it wouldn't have happened. So, like, kids that um, please come to me in the future if, if it's already happened to you or if there's stuff, if you're getting bullied or, like, uh, like violated or attacked or anything like that, like, mm-hmm. I will have a, like, sanctuary or a haven for kids to come, uh, like, unfuck all that shit. So, you know. Thank you for sharing that with us, Matt. Yeah. I know that was probably difficult and there's plenty of people that are yeah. going through struggles in their life, bro. So, thank you for that. No, dude, yeah. thank you, bro. That, I mean... Thank you for sharing that. That's that's huge. Well, it's a, it's a little bit of like if you were sparring and, and, and you were getting like whooped and, and you're scared because you don't know what's going on, you can't do nothing. It's like times 20 that uh, with stuff like that, you know, and mm-hmm. you're a kid, you don't really know what the fuck's going on. And yeah. you're just like, what the fuck? So, you know, I want to give kids, uh, I want to weaponize kids with, with self-righteous uh, d- defense, man. So You want to give them an outlet to be yeah. able to be able to get out of their situation in order to be able to see that there's better light out there than what they're stuck in. Yeah, yeah man. I love that, bro. Yeah. I love that. So. But, you know, well, hey, look, hey, I don't know if that's, uh, I well, just want to make sure we'll, I said we'll, that, you know. We'll, <laughs> we'll end on a, on a lighter note. Well, yeah. listen, hey, look, we want to just say, Matt, thank you so much for, for coming out. We do want to close. Okay. With a little bit of fun. Yes. Okay. Yes. A little we bit gotta of fun. Go, we got to have a yeah. little bit. So we're going to have a little bit of fun. A little bit. I'll, so, I won't do every single question. Uh, but Karis, okay. the stat guy. The stat guy. <laughs> no he has some trivia for you. So we're going to test your boxing trivia. Yes. We want to know what Matt knows in boxing. So Karis, I'm going to let you take it away. So I like to do little stat stuff. That's kind of what I like to do. But I also like to do educational stat type of stuff because I always like to learn when we do things as we go along. So got a couple questions here. Let's see how good you actually know. Um, first question, where was boxing first introduced as an organized sport? Uh, I would like to say, what, sanction wise? Or where did it start as like a, a like a business? Ooh. Introduced, so <laughs> as an organized sport. So evidence well, of boxing rules. Well, well, uh, Just I'd put Karis like on the spot. London? No, it's, it's a good, because I don't want to give away the is answer. It, is it UK, the London? No. No, it's not in Europe? No. Is actually the earliest evidence of boxing rules date back to ancient Greece. Oh, oh. quarter Greek. Where, where, where boxing was established as an Olympic Games in oh, wow. 688 BC. Greece. I know wrestling was, but damn, that, that, hey, thank you, though. <laughs> yeah, I'm open to, um, to One legend holds that the heroic ruler Theseus invented a form of boxing in which two men sat face to face and beat each other with their fists until one of them died. They sat? Yes. They sat in front of each other uh, yes. and just slug it out? Yes. In time, the boxers became to fight while 
while standing and wearing gloves, sometimes covered Fuck. with spikes to facilitate greater damage. Yeah, but that's like going back, like, his, <laughs> hey, like them Romans and them was fucking oh, vicious. Oh, yes. Yeah, that's, that's, that's all I see. That's, that's, no. that's gladiator type uh, yeah. style is what I'm kind of kind of looking at there. Yeah. Yeah, oh. you know, when I, uh, that, that, that's cool to know, man. It is. I like that. Yeah, see, that's those sick. are fun ones. Yeah. You know? What is the fastest knockout ever recorded in a title fight? Man, uh, uh, I'll give you credit if you have like me, just me, one of like the, the three. Tell me the decade. Like, is it like the eighties, the nineties, earlier than that? Or? Uh, 2010 to 2020. Uh, and I should know what the fuck. Uh, 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 Do you want me to give you weight class? You give me some tips. Uh, <laughs> the WBO bantamweight champion. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Uh, <laughs> I, I would have I would, I would just guessed, bro. I would have just. It's not, it's not Pacquiao, right? Nope. Okay. No. Um, no you got me, man. You got me. Zolani Teet. Oh, I don't know if it's Tete or Teet, because T E T E. That's who I was going to say. Knocked out his opponent. No, you weren't. He knocked out his opponent. Sabonisil Ganya in 11 seconds. In the first round. It actually Damn. took six seconds, but it took the referee five seconds to be able to call the fight. Right. Wow. So I don't therefore, know that one. that's, for, for example, uh, Masvidal knocked out Ben Askren in right. three seconds, but they called it a five second because it took the ref two seconds to get over to, to get be able to call there. it out. That's right. Yeah. That's right. All righty. Oh. <laughs> I knew that one. I just, I was just, you know, I don't want to say the answer because I knew it. Yeah. <laughs> what boxer famously said that he should be a postage stamp because that was the only way he'd ever get licked? Uh, Muhammad Ali. There you go. Yo. Ding, 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 ding. Which fighter knocked out Muhammad Ali in a controversial circumstance towards the end of his career? Mm. Um, it's a big name here. Was it an exhibition fight? The karate guy? It wasn't an exhibition. No. First, so it wasn't an exhibition. It was no. a legit fight? Yes. Hmm. Um, Did, oh, fuck. Towards the end of his career? Yeah. Ali was suffering from early symptoms of Parkinson's disease. Yeah. Oh, I, I think. Is I this the one? You know, the, I, I bet you know that. You, no, know you'll know it as I say it. But, you don't, you don't know it. Stop trying to ask I, know, I think I know this one, dude. I think I know this one. I, only, I think but I know this one. His nicknames are LH. Larry Holmes. Yes. I told you I knew it. I told you. That explains why he told Mike Tyson. Get no. him. You, know, you, told, no. you remember that? No. Why because not? Tyson fought an old Larry Holmes. Oh. And then when, when Ali for sure had Parkinson's by then, yeah. he was in the ring before Tyson fought Larry uh, Holmes. Okay. And he goes, get him for me. <laughs> So that's that good makes one. sense, bro. That's a good one. Sorry, Matt. I, I took your thunder no, there. No. I, I, know it was uh, <laughs> yeah. I didn't know that they considered Parkinson's already for him. What boxer killed a man in the ring? Oh. Fuck. I know that. I, you know, I know the fight, dude. It's it was, not a movie, right? No, it was the one where he had illegal <laughs> gloves, right? With the, with the, with the padded gloves? Or yeah, the, yeah, he pulled the padding out? I think so. Yeah, I forgot the name, but that's... Do you want me to give you the you year? Know, I, I, think, I don't know the... Nah, I don't know the name either, but I know that fight. The guy... Uh, uh, did, uh, he didn't, the dad he checked the kid. gloves, right? Or something like that after the fight? After. Yeah, the dad checked the gloves and then they noticed and then he tried to pull the glove and the guy pretended like his hand was broken or something like mm -hmm. that. Uh, it was something controversial. Yeah. So yeah. in 1947, Sugar Ray yeah. Robinson was scheduled to defend his title in a bout against Jimmy Doyle. Robinson tried to back out of the fight after having a dream that he killed Doyle, but a priest persuaded him to go ahead with the fight. And he did kill him? Robertson scored a decisive knockout in the eighth round. Doyle was taken to St. Vincent's Charity Hospital nah, immediately after fight. the bout, where he failed to regain consciousness Fuck. and died a few hours later. No, nah, it wasn't that fight. Damn, that's Sugar Ray Robinson, bro. That's, yeah. that's like Jack Johnson style. That's yeah. crazy. One of the greats. Who is the only heavyweight boxing champion to retire with an undefeated record? Rocky Marshall. There you go. Rocky. Ding, 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 mm -hmm. ding, 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 ding. Who holds the record for KOs in boxing history? Are you talking like this is a good one? The video game or no, just like no, regular? no, no? Because we'll if to, it was we'll, a we'll video to, game, we'll get to that one later. Hold on. It'd be me. It'd be me. <laughs> I set the record. So who's the only heavyweight? Oh, excuse me. Who holds the record so for KOs rate. in boxing? Ah! No, because no, I, almost, I almost read the last question. <laughs> so just any boxer? Who uh, holds the record for KOs in boxing history? It ain't Deontay. Uh, no. Uh, it's a UK uh, guy. Oh, UK. Definitely not Fury. It's an old fucker. Who's old? Buster Douglas. No. Uh, 
The most knockouts? His initials are B B. No fucking way it's this guy. If I think it, I ain't gonna say it. It's not Butterbean, is it? No, 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 no. that's that's a good one. That's no. a four round king. That's a good he one. Never did. His name is Billy Bird. Nope. <laughs> nah, never heard of him. He Billy had Bird. 356 pro fights, 260 wins, 73 losses, 20 draws, and 139 knockouts. Shit. 139 people. <laughs> The current record for an active fighter is 51. What the hell? Like, 130. Fights? Yeah. That current average like, fight. Current, current. 130. Like, isn't, that, isn't that good information? Don't lie to me. That's, well, that's back, some good back stuff. Back then, right like there. Floyd said, guys would fight like every five days or four yeah. days, you know? Bro. Yeah. What was the most rounds ever in a single boxing match? I'm going somewhere. <laughs> you guys aren't even close. I mean, I, when I heard this number, I was like, Jesus. In 1825, Jack Jones beat Patsy Tunney in a 276 Get round the fight. Get fuck out that of here! It took place in Cheshire, England, and lasted four hours and 30 minutes. How what? Did that even... Yes. What the fuck? What? Well, how does that make sense? Wait, 200 something rounds? Bro, four 276 hours, rounds times three minutes. Four hours. Four hours and 30 minutes. Isn't that more than four, four hours? Four hours, bro. Four hours and 30 minutes. I don't know if I could watch two people oh, slaying for four hours. Before the Queensbury hours. rules were in- introduced in 1867. Well, 240 minutes is four hours. Four hours. Four hours. Guys, and these guys are fighting for four yeah, hours. So how are they having two? Were they sitting? Hours? Were they sitting at one point? <laughs> no, that was, they, that, was, yeah. that was the earlier one. That was the earlier one. <laughs> well, either way, that's crazy. Oh, that's nuts. All right. What boxer holds the record for youngest professional debut? These are tough ones, I know. It's like, not. But I like uh, them. Yeah. Well, is the age 15? You no. not fucking hold back. Okay, okay, Old, so older or younger? Not, it's not the guy that I'm Okay. I'm thinking. It's, it's younger than 15, by the way. Oh, man. No, helps? I don't know that one. His name is Willie. Will O. <laughs> the Wisp Pep. Willie Pep? Oh, excuse me. No, I just gave you the next answer. Damn it. <laughs> Damn it. All right. Yeah. No, uh, after taking up boxing as, as early as seven or eight to the counter effects of polio, which he suffered from, Alberto Baby Arismendi. That is the kid's name. And he <laughs> turned it at the prime age of 10. Damn. <laughs> 10 years old. 10 wow. years old. I just gave you the next answer. I'm sorry, but you remember. Who's the only boxer to ever win a round without throwing a punch? It was Willie Pep. Yeah. Right. How do you win a round without throwing a punch? Easy. How? Wait, uh, if the other guy hits you once, isn't that losing a round? If you could dodge a ball, you could dodge, you could a, dodge wrench. a wrench. <laughs> I don't, if you get a point deducted, oh. if, oh. the guy, if the guy hits you Is with an a automatic low blow. 10-9 low, though? low blow? Yeah. Anything that can take a point. Willie Pep. Would you have known Willie Pep if I didn't, if I didn't tell I, you I that? Know I, I know Willie Pep's one of the names. Okay. You know? Who was the first fighter to defeat Mike Tyson as a professional? Uh, Buster Douglas. Yes, yeah. sir. Buster Douglas. Buster Douglas was forty-two and one, forty-two and one underdog in this fight in nineteen ninety, and he I've won. Seen videos and of that his shit. mom just died, passed away. Ooh, uh, really? Five, five, uh, three or five days before that fight, and Ooh. that apparently was the that was the catalyst. That was the momentum that was for Buster. Yeah, he's like, fuck this. What video game featured Mike Tyson as the final boss? Uh, punch out. Yeah. <laughs> I was waiting for you to answer. That's why I said we're going to have another one. Nah, I, I had to stop because I, I killed it on that one. So I said, let me stop here. <laughs> let me just rest on the throne. Yeah, I'm he, just going to rest He there. only had one. So he's like, I'm, uh, I'm done. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Who holds the record for the most professional defeats? Meaning he lost the most. Ah, dude. Uh, there, this, this is weird because this came up, I think. Uh, no, I don't know his name. I his don't. name is Reggie Strickland. Yeah. He had 363 fights. Yeah. Let's start there. Holy shit. 360. He geez. lost 276 of them. I was wondering if Rogan brought that oh. up. Not him, but it was on the Rogan podcast. I'm was not it? Sure. I'm not sure. All righty. You got a couple more here. I still wouldn't fight that guy. At what age did Mike Tyson win his first heavyweight world title? 20. Yes. Well done. Ding, ding, ding. Who is the only boxer who officially knocked down Floyd Mayweather Jr. during a fight? Um, um, no, he, nobody. No, it was Ofi- one, officially. It was, it was one person. No, but no. Maidana. No, 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 no. Listen, no. Zab Judah knocked him down. Okay. We're we talking like the glove little touch that we yeah. talked about earlier. Yeah, but they didn't count <laughs> it. They called it a slip. Really? Yeah. And then, and then Castillo. Castillo I put bl- him down. I, 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 well, no, he won, but who he didn't the- win. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I'm trying to remember. Hold on, hold on, hold on. There was one at Floyd. <laughs> I remember. Well, Mosley cracked him. 
Yes. Okay. But he didn't put Twice. him down. But he didn't put him down. No, th- that's um, the one Cotto Floyd. hurt him, Floyd but he didn't put him down. Th- listen, uh, stats, though, I think statistically, no, he shouldn't have a knockdown. So Mayweather went his whole career without being knocked out. But there right. was one time he was technically knocked down. Okay. Really? In 2001, in a bout against Carlos Hernandez. Really? It occurred in the sixth round after Mayweather clocked that. the Salvadorian fighter with a left hook. Mayweather moved his hands to the canvas, complaining about his hand, which ended up being ruled as official knockdown. Damn. So wow. what we just talked about by just touching wow. your hand, he so, just put it down and he said on. he... Did the guy hit him at all? He said he got hit. Because if you slip and fall, they should call it a slip. Well, that's what Mayweather was complaining about. So his hand, which just touched the ground. That's so the he, controversial one. That's your one controversial one. Wow. Damn, okay. Hey, I would have never guessed Hernandez? that. Carlos, Carlos Hernandez? Carlos Hernandez. Carlos Hernandez. I want to watch Put that. that one in your back pocket. Yeah. Right. Right. <laughs> it's in the queue. It's in the queue. We'll watch later. All right, we got two more. Who was the oldest heavyweight champion in boxing history? Um, Bernard Hopkins. No. No, it was George Foreman. Yes, it was George but, Foreman. No, Bernard Hopkins beat him. Since at then, Foreman had the record at 45 years old. Yes, in 1994 at 45. Yes. He was became the oldest heavyweight champion in the world. Yes. And, and he knocked out 27-year-old Michael Moore to win the WBA and IBF title. Absolutely. And then Bernard Hopkins, uh, knocked he, him out? he tied it. Yeah. And the big hype was to beat it. So it, he, he had a world title fight at 47, but the record is 46 now, I believe. Mm. But it might be 47 as well. So is this old news that I have in front of me? It, it could be. <laughs> My stats are wrong. Yeah. <laughs> both. both. <It> <laughs> See how I don't talk shit to Matt? <laughs> <laughs> Your aren't Especially because you're close to that right hand. Uh, too. I see it. I see it, dude. It's right there. I, I, go, I, go like I don't know if I can go this way quick enough. You saw that shit. I did not assault you. You're my witness. Uh, we doctored the tape. Okay. I don't know. I, I know. We'll look that up because I know he fought. Um, fuck his name. The French black dude that was good. Uh, no, but he. he uh, it, Bernard Hopkins beat that record. Okay. Yeah. He, so okay. now it's B-Hop. You might just want to look that one up. Yeah, okay. yeah. B-Hop. I got last one. Okay. I don't know why we're ending with this one, but it's a true or false question. Okay. Tyson Fury has won an Olympic medal. False. False. Yeah. He has not won an Olympic medal. I knew that. Did he even go to the Olympics? I don't think so. No. So no. That, that's why I'm wondering, because why with is that even a that, question? With, Maybe did he go to the that, Olympics, we can say With that yes, physique, you think he got <laughs> The Chipsy King on that one? Hey, McDonald's would definitely sponsor him. Hey. Oh, you're true. You're true. Shit, I know some, t- hey. some taco shops that fucking sponsor him, too. <laughs> hey, eat fresh. Eat Fury Fresh. <laughs> oh, hey. shit. Dude, well, that's the end of our trivia. Little yeah. questions. I enjoyed that. That was fun. Sorry. It educated us. That like, was we're good. Know those that was things. good. That was well done. Well, dude, I'll say this, man. It was a pleasure having was, you on the show man. today. Trust me. We will definitely uh be following your journey and cheering you on uh the whole way through we you have the full support from the mma game I am looking forward to coming um, to the fight brother yeah Cannot man wait. we can't wait and then just before in closing man get again let us know when your next fight is um we'll promote that and and any social media handles anything you want yeah, to say anything right you now, want it's it's now your your time no i appreciate it man uh yeah i will be fighting uh it's not it's not on box right yet but we're aiming for the 25th of march uh, in Tijuana, we got a good program down there where you can keep me active. Um, whoever drives out there and supports me, um, you will be taken care of. Nice. Uh, but Thank as you. far as uh, nice. as far as the future, uh, God willing, I get victorious on this fifth fight. I'm still uh, mm-hmm. I'm calling out these YouTubers, these little bros, these little these little <laughs> dorks. You know, I like what y'all are doing. You know, KSI, Logan, Jake. You know, I love. I I, I get what you're doing. Um, let me do it with you. You know what I mean? Uh, I'm a real boxer. You know, I'm, I'm on your guys' level, right? I'm a prospect. I'm going for my fifth fight. <laughs> um, don't take a big risk. Don't fight Canelo. Don't fight these guys. Um, fight me, you know, and uh, I'm ready, man. You know, uh, we'll sell the show. No, no, no BS. You know, the fans will get a fight. You know, I know you guys can fight, right? You can fight. Um, I can fight. So uh, let's do it. I'm still going to be bothering y'all. I'm still going to be throwing peanuts at your damn window. <laughs> um, you know what I mean? So, and again, I'm not against what y'all are doing. Just let me be a part of it. And thanks again for having me on. You guys. Oh, no of course. problem, man. Our no pleasure. problem. Our pleasure. Fucking love you, Thank bro. you for, uh, thank we'll you for being up, here. Uh, another time. Uh, yeah, we'll cool. definitely have you on the show again. And you know what? I can't wait to document us being at one of your fights. That's going to be the next <laughs> thing. Yeah. That's going to be the next one, I believe. Hopefully, we can make it there on the 25th. So, uh, with that being said, MMA game out.